Hello, everyone, and welcome to Canadians with Disabilities and Their Allies. My name is Brent Frain. I'm the host for the show. And today I am pleased to welcome Cassandra Pollack joining me today. And we're going to be talking about the difference between a disability income versus a livable income. This is going to be an interesting topic that we're going to be discussing today. So uh, poverty level versus uh, yeah, poverty reality. line it, versus poverty line. just yeah. you know, and I you know, and, and I and I hate to say the word poverty because the poverty should not exist in Canada. So this will be an interesting topic that we're going to be discussing today. So please tune in uh, if you're watching live. Send in our your questions, and if we have a chance uh, to answer them, we will go through, and uh, if not, we'll compile them and we'll answer them on our next segment. Hello. Last, last time, I just have to say, last time uh, when we had Jennifer on, I wasn't really looking closely at the chat. And so uh, I know that uh, Dan was on and he thought that uh, he was being ignored. And it's just because uh -huh. I wasn't, it's just because I wasn't looking at were, the chat. So you weren't paying attention. <laughs> so it, it's my fault if, if, uh, if I don't see, if I, if I don't see it, it's my, it's always my fault. It's not, uh, <laughs> it's not the guest fault. Cause I'm the only one that can see the, I'm, I'm the yeah. only one that yeah. can see the chat. Well, well, that's what happened <laughs> to me too. I had somebody send me a direct message and asked me a question to ask on the show while I was busy engaging with, with the, uh, with mm -hmm. the guests. So with the guests. Yeah. I'm not yeah. looking at my phone going then because yeah. otherwise then I'm going, okay, so I'm not looking at the phone. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I did it that one day and all of a sudden Neil's like, you're on. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. the notes. Oh, I'm on live. <laughs> yeah. So I try to, I try not to do that. So I try to stay focused. I've watched mm -hmm. on the news hour too and they're looking down and, and their notes and all of a sudden, oh, I'm on live. <laughs> yeah. I saw that the other day and my like, oh, geez. I'm thinking, mm -hmm. how, uh, how familiar is that one? <laughs> So, uh, Cassandra, so welcome. Uh, welcome back to the show. Uh, as, as always, it's a great pleasure having you on. Um, these these uh, topics are very important to, uh, to kind of uh, break down the two differences here. Um, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's very interesting well, to hear our take on this. I want to, uh, and I want to quickly do a plug for my, my podcast, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, I'm going to be talking about another topic about, um, I have a friend in it happens to be in BC um, that I'm setting up an interview with about um, it's to do with uh, safe supply, which I'm going to be be doing on poli the politics of disability and equity. Um, and and I wanted to let you know about that. Um, I don't know when it's going to yeah. be, but I'll give you a heads up when it when I'm ready to go. Um, but in the meantime, you all know my frustration. <laughs> I get upset with Jeff. <laughs> Look at because he's always talking about poverty level, poverty level. And it's like, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. But because what they're calling the poverty, what they're calling the poverty line or the poverty threshold is, a, I think, a more accurate term mm -hmm. um, is actually um, it, it's it's like I think in Quebec, they're they're basing it on like 49 percent of what uh, a livable income is. Mm what's considered a livable wage or livable income. So livable, we talk, I say livable income mainly because I think it should be about income and not wage. Uh, livable wage, but it comes from the livable wage. Livable wage is um, literally, now let me quickly look at my notes um, because I, I, so livable wage is basically, um, it, it, it's, it's based on, Working age adults, um, where was it? Uh, where is it? Where is it? Why we need to bring it? Um, so working age, they're, they're looking at working age adult, adults and and what, what a livable wage is for where the geographic area you live in that will cover all, like not just cover your base, it not just cover your basic necessities, but cover your rent, cover um thing ha, give you enough money so that you can you can actually participate in society outside of of work and survival mm -hmm. and and now i'll tell you in my calculations i used a 40 hour work week as full time because um a 40 hour work week is what you know that's a nine that's that's monday to friday nine to five is 40 hours mm -hmm. right um, and, and they were basing some of their calculations on a, on a 35 hour work week. Uh, and I don't think, I, I don't think that that's as accurate. That's my opinion. So I want to qualify that, 
but some of the things that I that I looked at, like um, I did some calculation, livable income in Canada's largest city. So, and this is 2022 numbers. Um, and and one of the things I noticed, and it, I sent you a link to the stats can, which is a living wage um, in a lot of major cities in Canada. It's a list mm-hmm. of them, and 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 there was a dramatic increase in most areas between in just one year between 2021 and 2022. There was a large oh increase in what a livable wage is considered. So it's based on an hourly wage. Um, basically. And so Alberta, um, it's $22 and 40 cents an hour, which gives you 46, uh, uh, annually at 40 hours a week, that's 46,592, um, dollars a year. Yeah. That's, that's for a sit. And these are all calculations based on a single person. Yeah. Wow. So this isn't a family calculate because there's calculations for family and single parent with one child so forth. This is for well, a single I, I, person. And I, and I think we should maybe mention too, like uh, whether it's poverty level numbers or livable income uh, numbers, mm-hmm. both of those calculations, I don't think uh, take into account that people with disabilities automatically are paying yeah, this more. Is- yeah, no, right? and this so so and I'll no, get to that. Both of know. those both yeah. of those don't don't take into that account, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Because no, numbers- no, no. This is based on these numbers that I'm giving you are based on a single person without mm-hmm. any disabilities. Oh, okay, okay, that's yeah. good to know. Yeah. Okay, so this is because they don't calculate they don't do that calculation. We do know that a minimum a person with disabilities is paying forty percent more. Oh, um, absolutely. But 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 yeah when they do these calculations they're basing this is based on a single person without any disability a single working age person without any disabilities it's, it's and they're the cr- basing it not on the fact that that they're working but i'm going to qualify that later because there's something important in there in in some of my notes that it's i'm going to credit tax we have to yeah it's that, that's, why dirt, that's why that's why yeah. is out of it yeah a crypt yeah. tax exactly so yeah. So, so t- Alberta, $22.40 an hour, $46,592 a year. BC, $24.29 an hour, Ooh. Um, fifty, th- which brings you 50523 at 40 hours a week. Mm-hmm. Um, Ontario, $23.15 an hour, uh, which is 40. And these are the largest cities most for the most part. Um, mm-hmm. Um, so like Toronto, so 2315 an hour, which gives you 48,152. And I find it interesting that the cost of everybody always thinks Ontario's got a higher cost of living, but it's actually lower than BC's. Mm -hmm. Um, and so none, none of it is the, is, is the highest of, I I I wanted to pick one territory and this is the highest of the territories and it's uh, 26, uh, dollars an hour which is fifty four thousand and eighty dollars a year wow. yeah um, but, but touch, a lot of stuff in there that's why the costs are yeah you know, like and i only highlighted a few like i wanted to highlight alberta bc and ontario but i wanted to also throw in uh one of the territories and and in that because there's more there's cal- more calculations you can probably look up your city in that link that uh i provided um, but spring, so spring financial did a thing and they did, they averaged out what a living income is in Canada because uh-huh. all these living incomes are calculated based on geographic areas and, and so oh, forth. Okay. So spring you financial, down to your so, city, you never would drink down to your city. That number could be definitely could be. Right. Helpful, and so know, an or- average is when you, when you calculate all these calculations to you add all these calculations up together and then divide it by the, yeah, and overall the number. You- the um yeah and gives you so this that's uh, what what an average how an average is done so yeah, so the I, I the le- gonna, le- the sorry. average sorry the average live live living income uh in count would be forty five thousand hmm. a, a year annually um and so yeah that that's kind of one of the comments that, that I wanted to make just to interject was too is uh you know you're throwing out these numbers and they're there are a lot higher numbers than, of course, what we're what we're getting now. But even 
even to the extent that uh, you know everybody everybody's been talking about the uh, Canada Disability Benefit too, and I mean, I mean nobody really knows what the dollar figure is going to be, but I mean everybody's pretty confident that it's not going to be anywhere close to that. <laughs> to, I, I, to, well, to, to the livable incomes that you're throwing out well, there. Well, it's right? not going to be even like there, there, there. There's even conjecture that will it even meet the what they call yeah what what they call yeah. the poverty it line. Do, it doesn't or seem like it will poverty be. threshold. Yeah, like yeah. It, that's really more the concern. That's I know why Jeff is always like the more Jeff the is more pounding I, on the yeah. the poverty level, and it's mm -hmm. like no, <laughs> because more, that's not really. That's not a real thing. That's something yeah. it's 50% of they, I, it's actually, I think it's based on about 49 to 50% of what a me, what they call a median income. Mm -hmm. um, and right. And, and it's like, but, but if you're not like, even my brother, my brother is, a, you know, a work, blue collar, cis white male without any disabilities. And, and him and I were having a comp because we were talking about my mom and services and we even had a conversation and I was telling him you know a little bit about my research between what's a livable income and I'm like well if you're not making a livable income you're in poverty right and he goes yeah <laughs> like even he was like yeah, yeah of course if you're not making what's what is a livable income then you are living in poverty and that is my whole mm. point and you know so I did some Thanks. And, and, and I want to go into some of the comments. So Fraser Institute, um, this was in 2020. They did a uh, something else. I provided a link to the whole report, um, a critical assessment of Canada's official poverty line. And they said, the more important concern with MBM or market basket measure as our official measure of poverty is conceptual. By choosing to define poverty as a condition in which a person is unable to acquire a living standard needed to integrate and participate in society, the government has rendered poverty unmeasurable. There is simply no way to credibly assign an income or basket of goods that will assure participation in large part because of the widely divergent interpretations of participation or inclusion. It is arguable whether income is even as important as other attributes like intelligence, attractiveness, self-confidence, and self-sufficiency to the goal of inclusion. And as of the latest, uh, this is the 2020 revision, the MBM line has increased substantially due, due largely to higher deemed cost of shelter so that families of four in most urban centers in Canada would have to have total incomes in excess of sixty thousand dollars to escape poverty, this yeah. I said, and this is twenty twenty. This I suggest is not reasonable line for poverty. It bears no connection to the understanding of poverty that most people have, as cited in the paper, which relates to the lack of basic necessities and bears no connection to the way journalists and politicians routinely describe people in poverty, hunger, material and deprivation, suffering. It is predictable, however, that societal justice activists are not satisfied with the level of the market basket measure and want more items included in the basket. So that's the Fraser Institute. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, you know, progressives like to rail against the right wing Fraser Institute, but hey, even they're saying it. And, and it, the, just this year, just this year, BCCTV News, um, you know, wrote an article about uh, um, and it in about basically working age, raising the alarms about a working age adults uh, living in poverty, um, and it, it was based on a report. They're saying the report raises alarms, and it's like one in one in five, and a, a, um, or um, as the survey for community food centers said. 22% of working age adults live below what they call the poverty line. Mm -hmm. Working age single adults represent half of the 1.8 million Canadians living in deep poverty and have an average annual income of $11,700. Wow. That's one in five, 22% of the population, $11,700. 
Um, and, and, and that's everybody. So the low income threshold mm. or poverty line, as they like to refer to, the low income threshold is 25,252 for a single, a single adult household. And I want you to keep that in mind. That goes back to the numbers I was just talking about. Right. Like, remember the living wage numbers? Yeah. They're almost all, you know, 40. Yeah, way up there. 40 to 50 percent mm -hmm. higher mm -hmm. than what they're calling the low income threshold or low income or, or poverty line. Mm -hmm. Like, right. think about that. Like, they're, they're, what the government market basket measures the report is saying the threshold is uh, for a, for the poverty line is twenty five thousand two hundred and fifty two dollars for a single adult, but a living a living wage in 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 the most in in the some of the largest cities is between forty six and fifty four thousand dollars a year. Hmm. So how is that? How is the poverty line only twenty five thousand, but but a live a, a living a living income is is around 50,000. Mm -hmm. But I guess like to be fair, to be fair though, um like you know, when when they rolled out CERB, CERB was $2,000. Yeah, a month. it was $24,000 a year. Yeah, so yeah. that that's that's right at the 25 24 well, it was below 000. It, even that was below what yeah, their threshold but, is, but, but yeah. But to be fair, that's right right around that yeah. same number. So yeah. You know, but well, that's um, what they that's they had already come out with because it, it, they had they had designated the market basket measure as, as the official measurement for the poverty line in Canada in 2018 in August 2018 uh -huh. I think I, I might have that it was sometime in 2018 so Around. so so move forward when they rolled out serve that was like 2020 yeah yeah so that's two years later and so you know like. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's they were literally basing it. They were basing it on their market basket measure. Yeah, in 2021, they said it was 2207. And it was interesting on that because recently we, uh, Sonia and Jeff and myself, we had a meeting with the uh, Minister of uh, Social Development Poverty Reduction in uh, British Columbia. And uh, we, we, we all thought we're going to be going with the LICO formula uh, that Jeff had mentioned that we've just, you know, discussing. And uh, we found out that the government is going to be going, the BC government's going to be going with their federal counterparts, going with the market basket measure. And they're going to be gearing right. the, the seniors, the seniors, how they do the GIS. And mm. so, um, oh, you know, I, well, was, the, uh, I know I don't even get me started because <laughs> I, I want to, I actually want to finish. It, it's frustrating. So Working single adults make up about 40% of all food insecure households in Canada. Think about it. working age, working age, regardless mm -hmm. of their working, working age single mm -hmm. adults with no dependents make up 40% of all food insecure households in Canada. Whoa. Yeah. Like, which, which, that, which is crazy because you think it would be mostly. Uh, families with kids would right. uh, would be yeah. them yeah, would yeah. be more no no it's for, forty yeah. percent of all households yeah. is it, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's 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 climbing it's climbing right and all the focus is on families and purchasing a, a home and it's like uh, it, it it's frustrating so in yeah. BC for but then it goes on like I, I I'm gonna take a couple more quotes for or one more quote from that um, because they the other thing the BC uh, CTV news article that's from that's June that's June that's cited that's was that in BC, for an example, if you're on income support, you get $914. So this is without not PWD for disability, but just $914 a month from social assistance. Right. And a one bedroom apartment costs you over 2,200 a month. Yeah. yeah. Depending on the community in Victoria. Like, like, What's gonna but be that's the, the average. But what's going to be the new uh, total for BC here, uh, Brent? Uh, uh, when, the, well, when they when they up the there, it's because it's going to increase one hundred fifty dollars, right? One hundred twenty-five. Yeah, one hundred twenty-five. Sorry, yeah. Um, okay. So nice. what? So what's the new? What's the new calculation now? Because uh, well, the the reason I don't know that is because uh, you know they're clawing back. 
five hundred dollars from me every month still because of my right. uh, survivor's pension. Well, right? It's fourteen. I thought it was like fourteen ninety five or something when, um, with 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 the, with the addition with their right top now, up. Yeah, right now it's thirteen fifty eight fifty is the base amount. Okay, so if okay. you don't if you don't want a bus pass, you don't want to travel around and you want mm -hmm. to feel secluded in your home and you don't want to go anywhere. Um, have everything delivered to you. Of course, it's going to cost you in grocery deliveries from delivery companies. Mm -hmm. God forbid if you want to take a taxi. But anyway, if you don't, anyway, if you don't want a bus pass, so you got fifty-two dollars, which they never did reinstore the bus pass, which they said they were going to, but they, mm -hmm. they government dismantled the program. Apparently, I don't know. It's but, unicorns. Yeah. It's unicorns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brand. So, yeah. so, so, so with no with no uh, with no bus pass, that's what you're going to get right now. Fourteen ten. Okay? Right, okay. right now, now that's what it and, is, and, right? And and the average household hold, oh, like rent oh, for at one on, at on one hundred twenty five dollars for the people in market housing. Yeah, yeah. in subsidized housing you won't get it, but or supportive housing. Mm -hmm. But in market housing you'll get another hundred twenty five. Oh boy, don't spend it all in one place, folks. Right, so but the now, average the average one bedroom okay. apartment is twenty two hundred dollars a month. Yeah, like yeah, in so, what? Like where are the like? BC is so out to lunch and I'm so, so disappointed. Even, so so my point is, is like, even if you went with the absolute lowest number of $2,000 that they gave for CERB, that's yep. still like almost $500 under, right? The poverty. Yeah. Well, it's under, yeah, the, po I, I, yeah, it's I, under I, the poverty just, line. Just, yeah. just, going, just going with the CERB number, it's uh, it's $500, $500 under CERB even. Yeah, right? yeah. Well, about yeah, I think I'm and, just under and just, so just like, under four hundred dollars. But yeah, yeah, so yeah, so like if you take just me as, as an example, can you imagine if if they actually even just went up to the CERB level of two thousand, and they um said okay, no more clawbacks. That would that would mean that I would get an extra thousand dollars a month oh i know if if right. they did if because right now like i said i'm, I'm getting 500 dollars less because of the clawback and uh and we're 500 dollars below the serb level right so can you so, imagine can you imagine if they went 500 dollars to to match the serb level plus got, got rid of all the clawbacks i would be yeah. i would be plus a thousand bucks a month you know yeah. you know how much a huge difference that would make it was like being like massive well, oh, I know, I know, and I, I should know too. Like, I, I, you know, like when I was doing those cal those, those calculations are are before tax income the mm. of the living income. So it would be your take home would be slightly less because you're basing it. I think those all those fit within the lower tax bracket of fifteen percent. So if you subtract your CPP and your it, you like it, your overall fifteen percent, it would be you know, a little bit less per month, but, but, but at the same time, it's still, it's still stark, right? If and, you have a damage deposit, they're going to take $20 off you per month. So then you take that off the total. So now, <laughs> 15, so now, you're, now, now you're down to 15, 15. Yeah. 15, oh, 15. I know. So and, and here, here's that, that number. I was just going to mention that number, that magic number, 15, 15. I remember that number back in COVID times um, because the ministry would say to me, okay, Brent, this is, and, you know, the landlord that I rented from wanted to have proof that what is your income from the ministry? Can you get them to do a printout? So I went to the ministry's office. They said, OK, this is the form. Give it to your landlord. Now, going forward, Brent, whoever you rent from, if you move from where you're living, you wherever you go, that is the amount going forward. Fifteen, fifteen. That magic number always stuck. And I still have the form sitting here. Yeah. Well, and here. So, yeah. And but, you know, what's funny is because the landlord said, when they took away the COVID supplement, now that dropped it down. And the landlord said, well, you told me that was the amount going forward. So I remember going to the ministry again. I said, well, my landlord's now mad. Uh, well, that's the amount we were told going forward that you will be getting. Oh, my God. I, well, I, I yeah. know. it's a it, there. I, I know. All the governments at all levels really need to get their act together. And I've got more. Like, policy options or, or options, politics, uh, my French accent is terrible. That sounds like a late night uh, commercial ad. Yeah, I Wait, know. Like, there's more. Uh, yeah, like there. <laughs> so, so the, in twenty, this this is they wrote this one on in 2018 in a, a, a paper called "Why We Need to Fix Canada's New Measure of po Poverty." So they wrote this the year, the same year 
that this that that Canada said we're going to use the market basket measure as the mm-hmm. official measurement for the poverty threshold, the low income poverty anyway. So uh, or poverty line, as we we like to think. Um, and so right. they why we need to fix Canada's new measure. And I've got a few excerpts that I, I wanted to highlight um, the government's. And I'm doing this because I want people to know, like the there are policy experts and people doing research and reports and surveys that are writing this stuff while the government is making all these decisions, okay? And mm-hmm. telling us what the poverty, what poverty is and and what's going to lift us out of poverty. There are there are academics and journalists and other people that are sh- highlighting all the things wrong with with what they're doing and how it needs to be fixed. So the government uh, policy options 2018 why we need to fix Canada's new poverty. The government's new tool for measuring poverty is flawed. Failing to acknowledge such fact key factors such as child care fees and actual housing costs. The way in which we measure poverty in Canada are complex and often largely inaccessible to the public, but they speak volumes about our priorities as a country. Statistic Canada currently assembles in, and this is, so this is just before they implemented the market basket measure. Mm -hmm. Statistics Canada at the time assembles income poverty data based on three measurements, low income cutoff, otherwise known as LICO, Mm -hmm. the market basket measure or MBM, um, and and the in- internationally comparable low income measure or LIM without a single measure designated as an official poverty line for Canada federal provincial territorial governments and civil society organizations have been using a mixture of these measurements to der- to, to determine poverty rates this practice makes it def- difficult to compare regional and national progress or lack thereof. Um, Mm. So Canada's first poverty reduction strategy in August, 2018, the federal government has dedicated itself to creating the the country's first official poverty line based on the market basket measure. The market Mm. basket measure will be balanced with the dashboard of other indicators of poverty that will be used to track and measure progress of the strategy in meeting and reduction targets. There are serious gaps in the market basket measure. If we don't fix them, it will be more of a barrier for people living in poverty than a tool to help them. Our focus as a country should be on our human rights obligations to create an environment in which people have adequate standard of living. The current design of MBM is less than helpful as Canada strives to to fulfill these obligations. The basket includes categories one would expect to see under the umbrella of basic needs, food, housing, food, clothing, and transportation, plus other expenses. The total cost varies from community and community. In 2015, in some parts of Quebec, this mm-hmm. number was 33,000, whereas in some places in Alberta, it was 41,000. But some vitally vital daily costs don't even make it into the basket. So things that don't make it into the basket and there's more but the the ones they highlighted um um policy options highlighted were child care prescription medication mm-hmm. um de- as out of pocket expenses not basic ne- they're de- they're designated as out of pocket expenses and not basic needs well mm-hmm. these are costs that many families in canada consider indispensable the mm-hmm. the market basket measure does not treat them as such so, so that is that is policy options in 2018 talking about wow. about about the government of Canada using the bark uh, the market basket measure as the measurement the official poverty threshold or poverty line measurement and all the yeah. flaws in it and and you know I, I keep talking about living wage so I did want to highlight um, CBC Toronto in January of this year what makes a living wage and why that matters to workers across Ontario. Ontario's average living wage, so this is averaged out. I know what I quoted was for Toronto. The average living wage across the whole, all jurisdictions is 1972 
per hour. And I think I wrote a note that um, 19, so, so that's 41,017 a year that av averaged mm -hmm. out. Um, per, according to a group that calculates the amount of money someone needs needs to make each hour or needs to make each hour to make ends meet. We look and so this is what they look. We look at all the major and even some of the secondary expenses. So this mm -hmm. is how they measure living wage. So you know, we look mm -hmm. at all the major and some of the secondary expenses that a worker would have to cover where they live as they're working full time. So the major ones are obvious, shelter, food, transportation, and childcare, but they also include things like high-speed internet access, non-OHIP medical costs. So, so things that aren't covered by the provincial healthcare, such as prescriptions. Um, then they also factor in applicable government taxes, transfers, and benefits. And and so, so that's how they determine, that's a, that's a snapshot in in how a living wage is determined versus what the how the poverty line. So so the, the calculation for the poverty line is very basic, excludes a lot of basic needs, whereas the, the calculation for a living wage includes um, all these secondary expenses and and you know out of pocket expenses that are essential to a person's life. Now they're saying what is essential, and, and, and this is where I'm gonna qualify it, they're saying for what is essential for if you're working, but arguably if you, there's a term that I, you know, I've used and I, other people have used is that some people are too poor to work. Mm -hmm. and, and what that means, if you're not making a living income, so if you're on income support or on disability and you're not making a living income, you're too poor to work because you, in order to get a job um, and forget about any kind of assistive uh, technology or accommodations as a person with a disability, but just to get a job without all of that stuff, you still need to be co cover the same things that somebody that's actually got a job needs to cover, mm -hmm. right. right? In order to get to work. Right. Like you can't wait till you need them. You need them before you find the job in order to find the job. You can't just try to struggle by and hope you get a job and then you can cover them. It makes no sense. Right. Well, I, I've I've said before, too, like, uh, you know, I've, had, I've said the example of uh, the guy that I helped on the uh, from the Disability Foundation, one of the one of the clients. He had a. Uh, he had social housing from uh bc housing and it was a really unsafe uh yep. environment right where yep. he was being threatened yep. his, his life yep. was being threatened and so mm -hmm. and he and this is a guy that wanted wanted to work he wanted to work mm -hmm. but you know how can you try to find work when your life is being threatened every day and so so then well, just survival yeah. even if you're like like even yeah. if you're not being physically threatened by another person, you're if you're living like a lot of us are, like living ha, being forced to live on disability. I mean, there are threats to my life every day that are not coming from an individual, but are just coming mm -hmm. from my life, like my ability to navigate in and out of my suite because I've got these ten seats deep stairs, right. Right. and I'm in the right. process of trying to. I'm in the process of trying to find a new place to live. Yeah. Once I settle in, I can start going back to look at, continue my journey of looking into going back to school or getting a job. Mm -hmm. But until that happens, I can't do it. So I have to try to find something that's within my means right now. Yeah. And there's almost nothing. And, 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 and that's a threat to my, my life, my life as a person with disabilities, because I have all these needs that, that are not being met in my current <laughs> situation while I'm struggling just to survive. Yeah, and and the, and the second part of what I was going to say was this guy had his life threatened, but then then uh, BC Housing agreed to move him the one time, and so he went from have his, having his life threatened to having smelly carpets, Ooh. where the the landlord wasn't going to do anything to to remedy it. Right, so, He's a, it's still unhealthy and a threat to yeah, his life, so, even though yeah. it's not. Yeah, so, yeah. The, so, so then he had insomnia. So so then he, then he suffered from insomnia and he wasn't he wasn't eating healthy because of 
you know, a limited budget, as we all know, a li yeah. limited food budget. So he's not sleeping well, he's not eating well, and yet you're expected to hold on the job. I mean, right. good, good luck, yeah. right? Good well, luck. exactly. <laughs> and, 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 you know, that's why I want to get into like minimum, you know, minimum wage. Um, where is the rest of my, okay. So, so one of the other things he said is, 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 you know, who are the people taking on one of the questions asked of the guy they were interviewing is who, who are the people taking on minimum wage jobs? Well, cause you know, and I want to highlight this. So, so a living, a, an average living income is across Canada. If you average out all the living incomes but geographically, if you average them all out, it's 45,000 annually, right? Wow. A, mi a minimum wage worker working full time is only making 31,200 a year. Mm -hmm. That's their income, 31,200. And that's based on the average uh, minimum wage of $15 an hour. So if you're making- right. so, that, so that's way below, that's way below the- Right, uh, yeah. that, that's still below what what's considered, what the average livable income is. And this is a minimum wage worker. So he says, what we know, and so who are taking on the minimum wage jobs? Well, the people that are that are earning at the bottom scale of the wage spectrum are overwhelmingly, guess what? Equity seeking groups. So mm -hmm. people with disabilities, women, immigrants, racialized people, we're the people that that within those equity seeking groups, we're the ones that are are even if we get off of supports or manage to get a job where we can work mm. full time, we're, we're on average working the minimum wage, which is only, it's still like, it's, it's still, if you average it out, like if, if you go on the average 45,000 across Canada, you're still, you know, 14, 14 or $15,000 a year below what you actually need to live. Mm -hmm. right and then if you're you know like it, it, it's 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 r ridiculous and they're low income cutoff here's my frustration with low income cutoffs mm -hmm. it's an uneven measure so tell me back to my livable income in the largest city so alberta calgary 22 dollars and 40 uh 22 dollars and 40 cents an hour which is 46 thousand um um 592 a year um, if you want to get into a one bedroom apartment in social housing, um, get certain like for home care, certain serv other services that you might need to live, um, the low income cutoff in Alberta is 48,000. But our, our app, like in, I mean, there's higher living wages. Um, the highest living wage um, in Alberta is, is um, $32 and, um, $32 an hour, which is 68,000. So that's the highest Canmore, um, a living wage in Canmore is $32 and 75 cents an hour, which works out to 68,000. So the, so they, so the cutoff in Alberta is 48,000 and in BC like for, to have a um, subsidized housing. So at 48,000 in BC, is how much is in BC? So, so, so BC, um, the living, the living wage in B, so the living wage in BC is a couple dollars higher in like Vancouver, it's 24.29 an hour, mm -hmm. which works out to at 40 hours, an average, you know, nine to five job. Right. Uh, $50,523. And, mm. and so, and so the thing, the thing about that is, is that, is that the, the low end, what they call the low income cutoff though in BC, think about yeah. that. Yeah. Living wage fifty thousand, um, a living and, and their low income cutoff is thirty thousand dollars. Like my Thir mother makes a couple hundred dollars. She's a senior. She's been working out of the. She's eighty something odd years old. She was working out of the home since she was eight. Since she was seventeen years old, paying ta paying her taxes, paying into the system, paying for CPP, paying for all of that mm -hmm. since she was seventeen years old. Wow. Okay. She's $200, give or take $200 above the low income cutoff of 30,000 a year. Oh, wow. That's and, scary. and, 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 and yeah. And they treat it like she's like, it's welfare or something. She paid right. for it for yeah. it. And, and mm -hmm. she can't get like, I can't get her the services she needs 
we're trying to get her into assisted living. It's right. really hard. There's wait lists. There's all oh, wait, even longer if you need a subsidy. Um, she only quali- she doesn't qualify for like safer in BC um, because her income's too high because that that that's that thirty thousand right. dollar yeah. cutoff is in order to get safer. She's above a couple hundred dollars above that, so she can't get safer. There are some subsidies that she can get, but still. If I was looking at the sliding scale through Fraser Health in BC, and because yeah. I'm trying to calculate, you know, the, you know, how much does my mother need to, you know, and 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 I'm using my mother like she's a senior, but mm-hmm. I mean, people with disabilities, yeah. we're in the there's no difference. We need the, the same, same boat. services, we're in the same, the boat. same yeah. services yeah. that a person, a, a, a senior needs is the same actual services that are utilized by people with disabilities. And the fact that we separate us as if we're independent and don't need the same things is such I'm I'm going to, I'm going to use a line from, from Jaws. Remember the line from Jaws? Yeah. Uh, We're going to need a bigger boat. Remember that line? Yeah. Well, I I wish, I wish we could tell the government that we're going to need a bigger boat. Yeah, but that's like saying like to disabled, like it's like, oh here, okay, you can have subsidized housing. Oh, but you want market housing. Yeah. Well, sorry, you want to pay more, go for it. Oh, you want yeah, to pitting housing? pitting yeah. a disabled against a disabled and calling it yeah. a fair system it's is like, not... well, here's twenty five for you and market housing, yeah. but you subsidize it, you don't get it because yeah, well, we already and, give you subsidized, you know. Really? And that's not a, my and mom that... gets more. My mom get my mom does not because my mom worked her whole life, she doesn't qualify for like she doesn't get oh, old age secure i think might get old age, but she doesn't get like a guaranteed income supplement because she makes mm-hmm. she she gets enough from her her combined pensions that she doesn't need it so so my mom's actually in a better position than most seniors her age mm-hmm. but but she's still living in poverty and right. they wanted her so she ends up in the hospital and the hospital is like you need somebody to come check on you every day Hmm. But when and uh, and and yeah. what does Fraser Health want to charge her? Thirty dollars a day. They're saying every day, like the hospital is saying she needs somebody mm-hmm. to come look in on her every day. It's thirty freaking dollars a day for them to do that. Mm-hmm. That's nine hundred dollars a month. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And That's and just because she's a, a couple hundred dollars above what they call the low income cutoff in BC, she can't get it. Like. Mm-hmm. We are, I mean, we're all like, I'm an adult with disabilities. Yeah, I can't afford to move to BC. I, I, my, like, just for example, not only will I lose about $500 in income, but just like my special diet allowance, I get yeah. 83 some odd dollars for just for my celiac disease. Do you know mm-hmm. what they give for, for a celiac diet in BC on, on PWD? I don't know, 30, $40. Or Oh, yeah. that's five dollars off. <laughs> Forty, like, do, do yeah. you know what oh, I mean? Like, it's it, half enough and, for rice. And the cost yeah. of living is yeah. like, look, the cost of living, a livable <laughs> income, and and oh. it's like your, it's thirty. Um, what is it? Uh, oh, Sonia has an update 35. on that. Oh, sorry. Uh, go ahead, Sonia. Go ahead. They they uh, they um updated all the supplements to they raised them up as of July nineteenth. Like for me, I'm on the I'm on the uh, diabetes allowance. I get sixty dollars from it. As of July nineteenth. Okay. But what was it before? Oh, it was thirty five. Thirty five bucks. So it's only twenty five dollar increase. Oh wow. <laughs> Whoa, but but hey, here here's the thing, everybody. Uh, you know the the government says apply for all these these extra supplements, but what they're not telling you these splashy headlines. Oh, oh you need a oh, you need oh, a vitamin okay. supplement. You need an iron supplement. You mm-hmm. need all these things. But what they're not telling you, the, the workers at the office will say, apply, apply, Brent, apply for all these supplements. But what mm-hmm. they're not telling you is you've got to have all these medical conditions in order to mm-hmm. get all these supplements. Well, you have to prove like, uh, uh, yeah. for instance, I, we you know, my do- when I was, this is another complication for me. Yeah. Um, when I was applying for, um, it, when I got the celiac, that they said, so- celiac or we like i can get the supplement for either having celiac 
or for having a, a gluten intolerance. So there's a lot of people that do there not have a, celiac yeah. disease, but they have gluten intolerance and they can't eat gluten. There's so you don't have to have gluten-free yeah. diet. You get uh, the new increase is $65 for gluten-free. Still, yeah, I still get $83. Like it's yes. like, I'm still getting yes. 20 more do dollars more. Like it's ridiculous. More in Alberta. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. And, and so, so I would, you know what I mean? Like I'm sitting here, I've got this elderly <laughs> mother. I'd like to be there for her. But I can't afford because I'd be losing. And not only that, if I moved to BC, there's things. Yeah. So when I was diagnosed with celiac disease, what happened was I I had had all kinds of other symptoms related to celiac disease. But one of the symptoms that actually really got the ball, I had this rash. I spent a couple of years in and out of dermatologists. I had at one point, I had like three or four dermatologists standing around looking at my rash, trying to decide what was it eczema was it was it psoriasis and they couldn't even fig figure it out it was like i got a new family doctor he's the one that figured it out he wow. was like and but th here's the mistake at the time i was working so i wasn't even thinking about i was oh. going to need to be on ace or anything like that yeah. um he says just try something just go gluten free if you want to know go to this website go google it and it'll give you, tell you, so go gluten-free and see what happens. So I went gluten-free. Guess what happened? The rash disappeared. It's never come back since I've been gluten-free. Mm, I've awesome. never had it. So we know it was the, and, and I looked at pictures of the celiac rash. I had, that's it. When I, and, and the fact that that freaking three or four dermatologists couldn't figure that out when I'm like, I've been able to look at pictures and say, oh yeah, that's exactly the rash I had. And, and, but because we, we didn't do the blood test and then the biopsy and I just went mm. gluten free in order to get the, in order. And, and there's no guarantee if I do this, that the biopsy will, will show, will not show a, a false negative. Right. Even if I do this, I have to go and I have to start eating gluten every day again for a minimum of two weeks up to a month be Ooh. before uh, I have a possibility of, of damaging my gut, damaging my intestines enough that it'll show up on, on a biopsy at, right. or a blood <laughs> test. Yeah, and so, stuff. right. And, and so wow. I've tried because of that, that whole thing, I've actually tried to go on gluten and eat gluten every day i have not been able to make it a week sounds first like a few days sounds like the, a fear factor episode well the first few days it's like yeah. okay yeah. yeah this is no problem <laughs> oh i'll do fine and then you're getting to day four and yeah. five and you're like oh my god i am so ill and i'm so sick mm -hmm. and and so my doctor knows that i have it like i had i had one dumb doctor that tried to after I had been gluten free for seven years, tried to uh, tried to test me, and I'm like, I've been gluten free for seven years. Even if I have it, it's not going to show up. And he, but he was just. A, but my other doctor knows that. He goes, Oh no, no. He goes, Definitely. When I told him about oh, the rash, yep, he's yeah, like, I mean, Definitely I celiac. About that, Cassandra, because I remember once upon a time, my family doctor, he retired. He used to yell and scream at the government. Uh, you know, oh, yeah, yeah. go through a reassessment. He goes. Damn well, he says, I've already assessed this guy. Why do I need to assess him? Why did his disabilities go away? Well, that's Ooh. it. I have to go back yeah. and get reassessed by a new doctor. And, you know, I cool. spent two years without a doctor. Now I've got a doctor again. Yeah. So to move to BC to help out my mother, I'm, I, I, lose, I, I lose my income. I have to, I have a three month residency requirement. Yeah. And I have to, like I looked up the gluten requirements for the gluten-free diet supplement um, under PWD and they want a diagnosis of celiac disease. Like, like yeah. with the tests I was referring to. And it's like, oh my you can't just like, I've been like, they how probably, am yeah. I supposed to do that? Like, and, and so they, like, they don't, at least here they include gluten um, intolerance mm -hmm. or they used to, I think they might've changed that new government. UCP, uh, um, but but um, 
I, I've been grandfathered in, but, but, you know, the fact that they want to make you and it's like, well, there's a, such a thing as gluten intolerance. It's a real thing. Yeah. It's, it's a real diagnosable thing. And, and people, some people aren't celiac, but they still can't tolerate gluten for some reason. Um, and it could be a, uh, to do with just, um, cause gluten's a protein. So it could be just a, an inability to, um, um, tolerate any kind, you know, a lot of kind types of proteins like cassian and stuff like that in milk. Yeah, I, I it, that with, uh, uh, with, uh, peanut butter, like bread, yeah. there's, there are certain breads that doesn't affect me. There's other breads it does. And mm. it's really weird. And they cannot get to the bottom of it. They they to diagnose this. And I've been testing it out myself and yeah, like there's a reaction, right? A reaction. And, yeah. Yeah. I remember having this discussion with a family doctor. And so I talked to the ministry. Oh, oh, Brent. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I just definitely get the doctor did do diagnosis. Well, he says, I can't diagnose something that that's not there, Brent. I said, well, they said, well, apply, apply. Well, what are you going to subject to put yourself through harm? Mm. I, I'm sorry. So I can't sign off on that and I won't do it. Yeah. 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 Well, and, and so back, but back to, you know, like I'm talking, I'm talking, I mean, we are talking about livable income versus poverty line. I mean, they've got us below the poverty line. They got us below the poverty line. There's no, there's no promise that this new Canadian disability benefit is going to bring us above what they call the poverty line. And the poverty line is about you know, between 40 and 50% of what an actual livable income is. Yeah. Probably. And, like and, and I, in my mind, if you want to measure poverty, you measure it based on that live, livable wage, a livable <laughs> income, because yeah. that's the real poverty line. The poverty line isn't the, that 40% of median in or 50% of median income or however each province calculates it. Mm-hmm. The real poverty line, if you are not making a livable income based off a living wage, you are living in poverty. I don't care what they say. And you are too poor to even find a job. Mm-hmm. And if you've got yeah. a disability, you're, That's you're, huge other expenses. You, your living yeah. income yeah. is 40% more oh, than absolutely. what a living wage is. And you like, so how are you supposed to survive? And this is my beef with Carla Qualtrill. This is my beef with the, with the BC NDP. Like I'm, I was born and raised, my father's from Bash, Alberta. I got family out here, but I was born and raised in British Columbia. I came out here because of bet, you know, there was better economic um, resources and stuff. Yeah. I didn't know when I came out here 21 years ago that I was going to get, I was going to get hit by a truck and that my mother was going to be 83 and in the position that she needs. Now there's all kinds of things that I couldn't predict, but now I'm stuck here. Right. I'm stuck here because I, even, even without the barriers of the residency requirements, like having to live without an income for three months and, 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 and then having to go find a doctor so I can go and get reassessed for all the things they decide they want me reassessed for, even though that's I've got, a, even though I got a medical file this thick yeah, that, and that shows problem. them everything. And so all those barriers, but on top yes, of it, I'm losing, I'm already not making a livable wage. I am 50% under a livable wage in, in Alberta. And I'm more than 50% less than a livable income in for a single person without disabilities in BC, at least mm. at least fifty, I'd say closer to seventy to seventy five percent. Because well, of- if I'm making twenty two thousand or twenty thousand or twenty one thousand three hundred dollars a year, um, yeah. in Alberta on on age with my special diet allowance. Yeah, in, and I'm also allowed to make. Here's the other thing, um, in El- in Alberta, so I get I get. Uh, the 1785 plus I get a hundred and fifty some odd dollars for my special diet, which brings me to 19, 1939 a month, right? Yeah. Um, mm. which, which works out to yeah, twenty something, thirty, three hundred dollars, whatever. I was just we were I was just three hundred dollars yeah. above qualifying for the federal uh rent supplement. Right. Yeah, the rent uh, um but but so so think about that. I'm I'm that's what I'm living on. That's what I'm living on now. If I move to BC, yeah, you'll be getting way. Like, I'm going to be getting about five hundred dollars less. Yeah. Fifteen, fifteen plus. When your... I eventually get it, well, that's, like, and that's... and 
it, it, it irks me because, you know, I listen to like when I, when even under, I was so mad when I was so happy initially when the, when the BC NDP won. Hmm. And then when they came in, like, I mean, it's a little bit better. EB's a little bit smarter. Like they're doing a little bit better. They're, 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 they're being very aggressive on a lot of, of housing issues and things like that. But when it comes to supports for people with disabilities, when it comes to supports for seniors, when it comes to, to income support of any kind, regardless if you're a senior or person with disability, in, in my, they get a, they get an F minus. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like, they are so behind the ball. This is not what a progressive government does. This is not what a uh, what we're supposed to stand for as social democrats. Um, it's like little. Pittance. This is not what we're so we're supposed to be about helping people. And if you want to, if you want to lift people and li help people live in dignity and meet our sustainable development goals under what under our as our as a signatory under the UN convention mm -hmm. not only on sustainable development but on the on the rights of persons with disabilities if you are going to meet those goals then you need to stop the the bull crap stop the the artificial poverty threshold measurements and market basket measurements and start using the living wage yeah, yeah. the li living wage living income that's the measurement that's the measurement, and you need to add the forty percent for people with disabilities, and and you need to raise your low income, like you know our low income cutoff is is like a uh, fifteen hundred dollars above what our living what a living wage is in Alberta, and in BC your twenty thousand dollar your low income cutoff is twenty thousand dollars under what a living wage oh. is. Wow. Like, you yeah. know, there's like right now, there's such an opportunity for the government to to do the right thing. And, and you know, I, I was reading all these. You can tell how topics. passionate I am. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, right now, like I saw the latest post today. Well, you know, we want to look at you know, modernizing. We want to thank our committee for doing this and that. Well, it's great. All these nice, great words. Right. Action. Action. It's, Action speaks volumes. Well, and, and you, know, you know, that's what yeah. made me so mad. That's why I. And, you know, I don't mind Sheila hearing this, that it was me. Yeah. Because you know what? What made me upset, why I left, I, I mean, somebody tried to call me back and I was just like, I just couldn't deal with it. Calling yeah. them back again um, after they left a message. I just, but I left this message. I mean, I didn't swear or call anybody names. I was just, I was just, it was an it's angry right. message because- yeah of everything that I just described about my situation, my situation with my mother and the fact that I'm trying to get her services and I, I can't afford to pay for them. Nobody mm -hmm. in my family can afford to help pay for them. And, and, and my mother can't pay for the, what she needs. And, yeah. and, and, and then I, and then I'm literally hearing Sheila Malcolmson say to you guys, you and Jeff and that, that, oh, well, we gave you four raises in the last mm -hmm. year. And none of them have even brought you to the poverty line, let alone a livable income for a person without disabilities. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, yeah. That, and that's why I wanted to, I mean, I, I, I fully um, agree with everything you're saying, Cassandra, but that's, that's why I wanted to actually go back to my point earlier where, cause I mean, I think precedence is, is important, right? You have, you have to go by what happened in the past and again, if we go back to CERB of what the federal government did when they rolled out CERB, they they came out with the magic number of two thousand dollars a month. That was their magic number. So this it was is based the, on the market basket measure. Yes. Yeah. So so they came out with, with two thousand dollars. So even if even if we we if we even if we stick with that low number of two thousand dollars, mm -hmm. that's still like I said, it's still. Of a full five hundred dollars under, yeah, or uh, the the poverty line. What 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 we're getting now? Like, you know, what we're we're getting now in BC fifteen hundred bucks. Not even that so, yet. Not even that yet. So so <laughs> there, we're there we're five hundred dollars under that two hundred two hundred or two hundred thousand two two thousand dollars a month. Right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I know, and I'm yeah. so like, I'm, I'm, and we're talking bare minimum here, right? Yeah. That was basically 2020. But think about though. this. Yeah. 
think about this for a second. There's things I've had to pay out of out of my own pocket for all the time. I, do. I had to pay for no. I yeah. have uh, my part of my disability from the car accident is my spine is so broken and my yeah. neck mm-hmm. and everything. Like there's so much. Like I am in so much pain trying to sleep. And I, my mattress, I could feel the slats in my bed through it. It was so old and so worn. And I had to pay out of pocket to get myself an actual mat, not just some mattress from some second had place that was refurbished, that was barely going to meet my needs. I needed to get something for my, the fact that I have this back, this condition in my spine, I needed something comfortable and I had to pay. I'm still paying. I had to go on credit and I'm paying a monthly amount just so I could have a mattress to sleep on because they wouldn't cover it. So these are these are the types of out of pocket expenses that are eating into what I'm. And if I was living in BC, I wouldn't have even been able to afford to do that. Exactly. And 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 and, and so these eat up my income. You know, like hopefully I'll pay it off soon. It, it, it's one of my things because now I'm looking for a place. I can't even find a place to live here within my means. But even where I'm living now, so I'm currently making nineteen thirty nine a month. I I'm my rent is a thousand dollars a month. Um, my um other basic expenses are probably another at another another five hundred a month. I yeah. still have to go to the freaking food bank in Calgary, yeah, which has a lower cost of living but a higher uh, you know a, a lower living livable income range. Uh, um. I am still struggling to make meet my basic needs. Yeah. Like, like how am I going to go to BC and live and help my well, mother? And well, that's the thing we had uh, a minister on the uh, honorable previous honorable Shane Simpson. Uh, he was the minister, the predecessor, uh, predecessor, the predecessor of uh, uh, Miss Malcolmson, who's now there. We had uh, Nicholas Simons. And then we had, Shane Simpson, and before that was uh, uh, Michelle Stillwell. Yeah. And so, but Shane Simpson, he had measured uh, the difference between at the time. I remember him saying so many times that he looked at Alberta versus BC. He sent his staff out there. Why are the rates higher? Why can't BC do the same thing? And he said, "Oh, it's all because of taxes." No, no like it isn't. Like, no, it's we not have, all about okay. Taxes. Alberta has absolutely no sales tax. I know. I know. And and they say, oh, well, it's the oil and gas. Well, I'm going to uh, let me give you let me give you something about uh, about the, the actual reality of our oil and gas revenues. Our government, um, I mean, it was better under the NDP. They gave us more. They were uh, they were the ones that that indexed. They gave us a big raise. Then they indexed everything to inflation. The mm. UC, this newfangled I call it a, a Frankenstein party because they mashed a bunch of pieces <laughs> that don't really fit together to try to make a, a united right party called the UCP. Yeah. Um, we call it the ununited conservative party. Um, but yeah. <laughs> uh, they, true. yeah, like, and, and they are like, they did draconian things to us. Like they said, oh, we're not going to touch a, they they didn't touch the base amount of Aish. No, they just took away the but index. They, no, what they they took no, not just the indexing. They they just oh. they took they took away the index. It's all these other personal benefits. Like we all used the to, there was a yeah. general personal benefit that used to be just over four thousand dollars that you could get uh, to. That's w- which you could get use a maximum of. That was the maximum you could use under that category, and a lot of people use that to get um to get um power uh, power mobility scooters. Hmm. right because it was just around the price for one they Hmm. cut that in half there's medications that like normally the way it used to be even under under progressive conservative governments if i went in to get a medication uh, if i went to get a medication and it was covered the first time it was covered every time i went and got a a medication prescribed um for something that's going on in my back Mm -hmm. and um i got it filled it was covered I go in the next time they're like, they're like I want $23. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a huge thing. They try to um, in, insulin pump therapy for certain people with aggressive forms of diabetes. They, they tried to kibosh that. And then there was a huge public uproar. And of course they had to reinstate it, mm-hmm. but, but there's all sorts of hidden 
like all those extra personal benefits that you were talking about it, Neil and Beast, we, we have those too. And, and that's where they made the cuts. They made oh the cuts God. in those extra personal benefits. I used to be that able to get, I used to get home care three, three, like I, um, so I have limited, I have multi-level spinal cord compression in my, in, in my cervical spine, in my neck. Mm -hmm. And so it, um, it, it's painful to wash my hair, like hold my hands up like, that yeah, for, um, yeah i fine. can do it but it's it, it it's like hurts. i'm i'm exhausted like afterwards mm. and so i have to i have somebody come in i also get because of my neck i also can get vertigo and and get dizzy and and stuff and i was terrified so i have somebody mm. come in to help me with the shower well i used to get yeah. that three a shower three times a week and housekeeping once a week <laughs> now i i only i now i apparently i only need two showers a week yeah oh and uh, yeah, now I, I only get two showers a week and, 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 and I get, and I get uh one hour of, um, and actually it's, well, it's not quite an hour because it's combined with my shower. Uh, it's an hour with my shower and the ho light housekeeping. That's every two weeks. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's, and they, yeah. and they, and they call these, they call these things personal audits too. Cause I remember like my previous yeah. wife, she was, uh, you know, in a wheelchair with, with, uh, lifelong disability she, she has an, a motorized wheelchair she had arthrogryposis so her joints were fused right from birth yeah and so she needed uh she needed care aids 24 7 like 24 7 care aids but she only got funded by the, from the provincial government for 12 hours so she always had to stretch it out right yeah and, no and and every every year or every couple of years at least um she would have to uh, um, you know, go through these these personal audits where they have somebody come from from the ministry and and they, they'd say, okay, how many how many times do you go to the bathroom? How many times do you uh, yep. scratch your eyebrow? How many times do you brush your yeah. teeth? How many times yeah. do you do you have to put on make all this kind of stuff, right? So, like yeah. every little thing had to be itemized, like. How, like, how much time do you spend in the bathroom uh, and uh, how much time well, yeah, do you need to do you, this, that, and the other thing? And it's just, it's, it's like the it's disability. It's really dehumanizing, yeah. right? Yeah. Exactly. Well, it's like, the, it's like personal audits. Yeah. The disability tax credit is based on uh, uh, the percentage of time, more time you need to do certain activities like mm -hmm. dressing and stuff like that. But a lot of people, it's not due to one condition. Right. Multiple. Right. So, so they have this things. You have to explain multiple conditions. Like, yeah, it's not that. Like, all I the, all the hoops you gotta keep jumping through, right, mm -hmm. to keep on proving yourself. Right. Like that's that's <laughs> with the disability tax credit. Like you have to sit there. Like oh. you have to get the right doctor that actually understands it and can say, look, the combined thing. And 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 one of my things was like, I like they they initially. Um, they decided, even though my doctor that said that my condition with my spine was both was both permanent and progressive, right? Yeah. Um, they also asked this other question, which is the stupidest question. I mean, and this goes into episode episodic disabilities. They said, "Well, you know, is there a chance that with certain therapy or treatments that she could get better?" Well, yeah, temporarily. Eventually, yeah. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm always gonna get worse because it's progress. It's permanent and progressive. So exactly. I'm always gonna get worse no if yeah. I get certain yeah. interventions. If 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 yeah. if is the big word. Yeah. If I get certain interventions, which I have not been able to adequately get, by the way. Yeah, like I for could me improve my. I could improve mm -hmm. my situation for a period of time, but ultimately, it it's only away. prolonging the inevitable. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. For for, for me, like, for for me, oh, uh, massage, massage is huge, right? If I if I had if I had massage regularly, that's that's huge for somebody like with myself, like has cerebral palsy, because my my muscle tone, tone is always tight, right? So to be mm -hmm. able to relax your muscles is a huge thing. Uh, but I mean, if I can't afford regular uh, massage, I mean, it's totally out of pocket. Same I mean, here, I, like I, I wish I wish I could afford it. I can't. Like occupational therapy, physio, all these things. Yeah. Like they they sent they started sending a physio. I mean, he didn't do any exercises with me. Mm -hmm. He he said, "Well, here's some exercises." 
and made sure, do you know how to do this? And it's like, well, I know them, but, but sometimes what you actually need is you need somebody to help you through it, even though mm. you know how to do them, you still right. need that. Ex- like it, it's like, and, and, and it's like, well, why am this guy being paid to come in for 15 minutes and yeah, hand me a bunch of papers well, and say, do these exercises. Oh, if I, if I, I already know the exercises, if, when, if, if that was the issue, I would be doing them. I need help. When <laughs> I, I remember a time when, uh, when I had uh, dislocated um, a disc in my back and I had severed another two other discs in my back. One was actually, I can't even pronounce all the different terminology names, but one was like very severe. And I didn't, I, for me, I was in a lot of pain, but I didn't realize how much pain until yeah. the x-rays showed. And the doctor, he was a, a physiotherapist and a chiropractor. Um, and I was so scared about going to him, but I was referred to go to him. Like I wasn't like, you're going to, you're going there. And a friend of, a friend of uh, my, my friend and a friend of Sonia's, um, he said, either you're going to go on your own free will, or I'm going to piggyback you. I'm going to throw you over my shoulder. Mm-hmm. I'm going to carry down you, you there. Cause I couldn't even get out of bed one morning. Like yeah. I had coming at a, at a job and, and yes, partly I, and I, I fully take blame in part of it, not full of it though. It was a setup, but I, WCB gave me supreme shit because they said, you knew, you knew that you should not have lifted something up. Right? Whatever, it, like, I'm mm. sorry, but. Yeah, but I said, I yeah, was, you shouldn't I have, do but did you have to? Like, was there yeah. something said, like. Yeah, and I was told that if I don't do it, you're gonna be fired. So mm-hmm. it was kind of like, yeah, if you don't do this, this is what's going to happen. So, and I, I well, like, you know, the thing is, well, I was well, doing and, and minimum, it was a minimum stuff. wage job too. Yeah, exactly. Minimum wage workers are more likely to feel yep. pressure. Yeah, and they have to um, do, to do things that they should refuse, yeah. but they're more yeah. likely to to go and you know, and that's a whole other equity thing. Yeah, like and so mm-hmm. so what what happened was uh, I went I had the doctor and he. He taught me how to, to raise my arm, to do exercises. I said, I can't do it, doc. I'm in pain. Well, let me work with you. Let me show you how this is, is like rehabilitation. Mm-hmm. He's like teaching you how to, how to move yourself. He says, because right now I'm doing the treatment right now. You're not going to be able to do that. You're not going to be able to, you will in time, but you're not. You're not right now. You can, well, that's, that's my whole healed. point. Like, yeah. like, and here's the thing. So when they're talking about, this is the other thing when they, when, yeah. so often when they're talking about um, the, uh, the extra costs of living like, with, a dis- <laughs> the extra costs of living with a disability, we talk about the 40 to 65%. Yeah. Well, you know, and you can almost hear the government saying it. If you look on their website and read some of the stuff that they've said, I mean, they're talking about putting a framework to make for disability supports and stuff like that. And the mm-hmm. problem with that is, is that you can put, no matter how comprehensive your disability support is, the only thing I've seen close to what w- might be able to do it is that, is that, um, is that, is that disability insurance in Australia that they put together. Right. Uh, but outside of that, outside of, of something like that, in order, th- there's no way for the government to be able to, to, fund all the extra all the individual extra costs for each individual person with a disability like there's no way to legislate that into do you know what i mean like it's just yeah. too you can't do it so just give us a livable income for a per not based on a a, a livable income for a, a working age person okay mm-hmm. yeah plus the 40% 40 to 65% yeah because of just your- give us that and let us do it. Let us and, fill in. And, We're still going to need some other supports from you. Yeah. But just if you if like if you just give us the forty percent on top of the living wage, the living wage plus the forty percent, and still continue with the supports that you're already, then we could probably afford some of these other extras that you can't possibly legislate into covering, and 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 maybe have some kind of and be able to participate in our communities in, in a meaningful big- way have some kind of dignity and, and here's the other thing too is your disability doesn't a person's disability doesn't go away so if you move like like you said it's like your your situation is you want to live in bc because your 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 parents are there right you can't afford to move there so and now there's a three well, three mom's months getting later. old and we're yeah, getting exactly. scared for her and yeah. i'm yeah and and, and, it, and to me it's wrong when a government says oh well you need to now apply 
under there is to see if you qualify, the doctor now has to reassess, get a new doctor, get a reassessment. Oh, you know what I mean? Disability doesn't go away. It should be transferable. It doesn't matter what you're in. Well, yeah, well, like my girlfriend, I, I have a girlfriend um, that's in Calgary now. Like she was, she, I knew her before her brain injury, but I was there when she went through rehab for her brain injury from a stroke. We were in our 20s. Yeah. Okay, so she's had this, she's been disabled since her 20s. She was, um, she managed to work and do a lot of things. I mean, work that I, you know, um, she even does work now that I can't do, but, but, but she doesn't do it all the time. Like her body's too hurts too bad, but, but she was on ODSP in Ontario. Right. And then her mom got sick and she comes to Alberta. Mm -hmm. Right now. She, of course, you're getting more money than you're getting in Ontario, which is great. Uh-huh. cost of living is is better so it's it's a better situation but but the first time like i had to calm her down because a lot of people will be like they'll get this back and they're like oh i was denied and that's what she thought she thought she was denied and i had to look at the paper where i'm like no you're not denied what they're no. they haven't outright denied you what they're saying is they want you to go to a doctor and get reassessed for this this and that to show that and it's like it's a brain injury that she yeah. has had since she was in her early 20s exactly nobody like, should how the f- I, I pardon my language it's I okay no, but, no, no but 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 how in 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 what in like there's so i i'm just so tired i mean even some of my favorite politicians yeah. i am so tired of being dismissed and being saying, oh, you're asking too much. No, we've not been asking for enough. We're always asking. We're always begging for crumbs because we're so afraid of being turned down. We're so afraid of being turned down by our government to give us an adequate that we're always asking for crumbs and they only, and they always give us a few less crumbs than what we actually are asking for yeah. and they, they never they, yeah or they get or they wait a month they are a year and they skip a year and go oh look what we're doing oh we skipped a year mm-hmm. and oh said so, really well, like <laughs> I, I was just reading something when i was doing this research about the 15 dollars uh, they were talking about the 15 in that art one article about the 15 dollars an hour well they oh. started asking for the 15 dollars an hour in 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 2017 and didn't yeah. get it for 3 years. Well by the time they got that 15 dollars an hour yeah the what what yeah. a livable well, income was had increased every year for those 3 years since they started asking for it. So they're oh, now yeah. 3 so they gave them the increase to 15 dollars an hour but now they're 3 years behind what they would have yeah. been if they had just freaking given it to them. And they're, that's what they're constantly doing to us. And and the other thing is, is this idea. I, I am tired as a person with disability to be treated like I'm some kind of welfare case. I worked. I worked yeah. my whole life. I raised a child. Sometimes even when I couldn't get it, when I was a single mom and I couldn't find a job within my work hours, I volunteered. I volunteered for an organization on the downtown east side. At one point I was doing 80 hours a week in volunteer work, 80 hours a week in volunteer work and collecting an income support check. Yeah. Okay. I, and, and when I did work, I, I, you know, when I was able to get employment within my daughters, I worked when I was the whole time in, now, I was in Alberta, I worked, I paid my taxes. I made decent money for a lot of the time I was here because I was either selling cars I was, yeah. I was managing, I was the business development manager. I was taking home. I was, my take home was 65,000 a, a year. And I, you, do you know what I mean? So I've been, I, I'm paying, I've paid my taxes. I've contributed to society. I never, a lot of people were like, oh, why do we have to pay for, for people with disability? I never minded that because in my mind, my yeah. part of the social contract is I was, I didn't mind paying because by helping other people, yeah. what if God forbid something, what if, what if, what if God, for, something happened to me and yeah. I needed that? Mm-hmm. Well, and then it happened and then it happened. And I, the God forbid happened and I needed it. And then they're like, I, 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 I'll never forget. I lost my, you know what, on, on this 
this yeah. regional manager for age because yeah. she, she's like, well, you know, it's tax. She like, literally I had been out of work for, I had been unable to work for maybe a year. Mm -hmm. And prior to that, I was, I was like a business development manager, like a sales manager. Right. You, you, you know what I mean? Like yeah, making decent money. And she says, oh, but that's taxpayers money. And I went tax. I said, taxpayers money i said the only reason i'm not paying taxes right now is because some drunk driver ran a red light and totaled me i said i only stopped only haven't been able to work for the last year and up until the last year i was paying taxes and i paid your salary i paid for this program to happen and you're telling me don't tell me and she just like, honestly, you could hear her. You could almost hear her on the phone, like her whole body going. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, you know, shoot. You what know, did I... that, that actually sounds almost familiar, uh, similar like, to a, a situation that, that I went through where we, I, Sonia and myself, we had found a brand new place we moved to. Okay. But before we moved there, we were living in Nanaimo at the time. Okay. Yeah, we got chased out by bed bugs. <laughs> That's another story. Yeah. But anyway, so we, we were living in Nanaimo, but we found a nice place to move to. You know, the ministry said to me, you're going to put yourself into, into a dire situation, to a crisis situation. You're moving from a cheap place to a very more expensive place. And uh, don't reach out to the government because if you do, do you that- you think we're, we're I gonna, don't know I'm, my situation? Like, yeah. And, and I, you like, know what I, I'm, I'm not- I'm not an infant. I yeah. know how to manage my own finances. Yeah. Yeah, even though said, you don't give me said, enough. I told him, I said, don't talk to me like I'm a little, yeah, I said a kid or an imbecile. I said, I already had a mother. I don't need another one. Right to yeah. the legal. Yeah. And I yeah. oh, good for you. a formal complaint against her because she says, you, if you apply for a crisis supplement or anything, we will deny you. And I said, really? Well, we'll see about that one. So anyway, uh, long story short was I actually filed a complaint against it. And they're like, you do realize your rent's a lot higher. We won't move you. We won't do this. We won't do that. I said, you know what? I said, I go, I said, if you guys would actually listen when I say raise the rates and actually listen to, you know, people, where would we be at right now? But no, 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 they don't. Well, that's that's so, the whole thing. This idea that people with, that, that, that because I'm on age, I, I've never paid taxes in my life. I've never yeah. contributed to the system. Yeah. And not only have I, but even if I was dis even if I was so disabled from birth that I was never able to hold a, a, a job, yeah. my parents have been paying. Mm -hmm. Like I said, my mom, since she was 17 years old working, she's 83. She worked out of the home. She, she continues to eat at 83. She continues to do volunteer work for the retirement society. Uh, society. She, it, she's done stuff with, with friends of medic. Like she still, you know, like she manages their membership list and calls people up and manages all the members. You know, yeah. she is still, even though she's now trapped in her home and she needs more care, she's still contributing to society. That. And that's worth something. That yeah. is yeah. worth something. And she paid her whole life mm -hmm. for the system to take care of her and to take yeah. care of yeah. me it if anything should happen to me and I need it. Even if yeah. I never paid, but I also paid into it. Yeah, it's like, I, it, yeah, it's like since I was like I was a little kid when I was twelve years old. I wanted to do this paper. They wouldn't let me do it until I turned thirteen. Anyway, they made exception, let me do it because I was so desperate. I wanted to make money, so I wanted to buy a bike. I wanted to. I was so many things I wanted to buy because my mom, I uh, lived with her. And yeah, she was a single mother, and uh, she brought my brother and I up, and so she couldn't afford all the extras. And if you wanted it, you had to go out there and actually work for it, Brent. You need to go and do a paper route, babysit, do a paper route. I don't care. But and all then, of these things, yeah. don't you, don't you yeah. think the fact that we've managed to, yeah. to, in spite of our disabilities or when we became disabled or whatever, yeah. we've been able to contribute. And guess what? You know what? Do you know who all that unpaid labor and those volunteer shifts at all those organizations, do you know who who the majority of that unpaid volunteer labor is mm -hmm. people with disabilities. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So exactly. we're actually working and you're not paying us. You're giving us a check and telling us that we don't contribute to society. So we shouldn't ask for more in yeah, the meantime, that's... all that money you're throwing, you're, you're... governments are throwing money at food banks and throwing money at this. Oh, I know. 
and, yeah. and and we're the ones that are the volunteer labor that are running those things for free. Well, and- that, that's the point <laughs> I wanted to make is that I've said this before is that all of these uh, social assistance programs, whether they're in BC, Alberta, anywhere across the country, they're all set up as charity. It's it's all like that's that's the way it's 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 and, pillared, and- it's pillared on charity. It's like it's not it's not money that you deserve or it's not money that we're going to give you out of because you deserve it. It's charity. Everything is charity. Oh. Well, and, and the other, like, you know, as if you didn't contribute to it, like, as if you never, yeah, like, as if you didn't, like, and that's what ticks me off is like, especially with the whole food bank and food insecurity mm. thing. What really ticks me off back, you know, about this whole poverty versus living income is that they're like, oh, we're helping people with food insecurity. The government's going to give yeah. the, the millions and billions of dollars to to food banks and charities, right? And it's like. Why don't you just give the money money directly to the people people that need it? And then you won't need those freaking charities because we're the ones doing the labor on those charities anyway. They can make the decisions that's best for the individual of what their needs are rather than what the government says, the food bank says that their needs are. And you can and and it's unpaid work. Like we're doing we're we're doing the unpaid labor to keep these charities going. Yeah. But then meanwhile they want to congratulate themselves. Look what we look what we're doing. Yeah, I and and it drives me nuts. And that was the other thing I think that spurred my call where I left that angry message with Sheila Malcolmson was there was a comment about it was about food she made a comment about food food banks and I was just like oh I I just was like are you like forget the food bank the food bank do you know we had in the in 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 the in the great depression we had soup banks right that's right I remember that after after the after the second world war we we no longer had soup lines we did not yeah. need soup lines again after the after the Second World War ended. We never needed food banks again until the 1980s, the, rece- right. the, the Great Recession of the 1980s. Yeah. When we had that, that was the first time we started seeing um, soup kitchens and 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 then food banks. And they were they were they were at the time they were supposed to be a temporary measure, but they've turned it right. into this industry. Companies like Loblaws, yes, they they do not donate their expired food, yeah, and they donate it to these these a these these places, and then they get these huge tax um receipts. They get these yeah. huge tax receipts, oh, yeah, to write it to off circumvent them paying their yeah. fair share of taxes. Well, the, and, I... and 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 it's this whole and it's like. And then governments just keep throwing money and they're wondering why p- more and more people, then, then they were like, oh, how come more and more people need food banks? Yeah, well, Because well, you're not you- directing your money properly. Yeah, you need to but direct- now you've got the middle class going to food banks and people yeah. like when I say middle class. Well, yeah, back, I know. And I know. Well, my mom used to tell me stories when, when I was a kid and I, I you know, like the neighbor said, oh, I have to go to a food bank. What is that? And my mm-hmm. mom says, they should never exist. And she said, they never did. When I, when I was a kid, she said, never even thought about it. She says, well, you know, there was never, it was never a thing. And exactly, you're right, Cassandra. Like she said, there were soup, there were soup kitchens after the World War. And then, they, they, like you mentioned, like the food banks came out slowly. Now, like, yeah, it, it's- like It wasn't it, until the eighties when we started yeah. them again. Yeah, after yeah. the great recession, we didn't need yeah. them. Until and the, I, was- the idea too, that uh, like, you know, I worked for 20 years, uh, before I, I uh, got on disability and I, I, I kept working even when I went on disability. I've been on disability for about 14 years and, uh, you know, I kept working still a little bit. Um, but, you know, before I got on disability, I've still worked for about 20 years. And I know that you yourself too, Brent, same thing. And, yeah. but even oh, if, yeah. even if, um, even if I never work again in my life, which I, which I might, might not, even yeah. if, or even if there are like lots of people that are on disability that, that can't work or have never worked. Yeah. Even if that's, that's true. We're still paying taxes. We're still tax. Yeah. Cause we're, we're well, still, even though we don't have a grocery store. We're still, even we're going though to, we we're don't going have to the a grocery store. And again, to take, 
to take my own example, like, uh, you know, I, I did that one video about my wheelchair, right? I, I right. told you, I told you that, um, you know, the, the government, the provincial government is paying for, they paid $2,100 of that, right? But, yeah. but I still, it still means that I, I was paying the $1,700 out of my own pocket because they're not going to cover me fully. So guess what? That $1,700 I had to pay seventeen hundred dollars plus the tax on it, yep. right? Yep. So, so, so yep. again, you're saying I'm not a taxpayer? Excuse me. And I, I had to pay property tax this year, which is double, yep. which was double this year over my last four or five years. My my property tax went like double. So you can't say that I'm not a taxpayer because I I paid my property tax. I paid my tax on my wheelchair. I Even paid in, I paid tax in the grocery store. I paid tons of tax. Don't tell me I'm not a taxpayer because I am a taxpayer. Even in Alberta, even in Alberta, where we do not have a provincial sales tax. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I'll tell you, like things like the GST and provincial sales tax, those are the those are the transparent taxes that we pay because everything that we buy, both provincial and federal governments have hidden taxes on them. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. right? Like there's hidden taxes that are that are included in the in in the all over price of something yeah. that 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 people don't account. So it doesn't matter. You're right. It does not matter. Even if you never worked a day in your life, mm -hmm. even if your parents never worked a day in your life and contribute, you every single thing that you purchase has some kind of tax on it, tax whether, on it yeah. whether you exactly. can see that tax or not. It's, it's like our like the fuel tax. Like yeah. we got this. 15 this 13 or 15 cents break on fuel t uh, on our gas tax yeah from from our provincial government like it's it's supposed to be help with the cost of living there are <laughs> other taxes on there both from the provincial and federal government that are not being that that are not being talked about it's just one specific tax or, that they're talking about i mean 75 per 75 cents on every dollar at the gas pump is all tax and and let's be so to uh like totally honest about things too is that uh these fuel taxes oh, are yeah. being passed on to the grocery stores right yep big time uh, because all, all these people that are uh you know that are well, trans yep. that are transporting our food to the grocery stores are paying the fuel tax and that's getting passed on to the consumer here's it's, the uh, deal. In, the, in the grocery store this leads the, into the, my other thing i yeah, wanted to talk I about yeah, I was just going to mention uh, on that quickly. I was just going to kind of interject on yeah. that. I learned I learned that back in college, a course I took. Uh, it is all about logistics, and so I'm glad you mentioned that. And you know, is is mm -hmm. that the middle guy? So now you're okay. So I'm going to start uh, quickly summarize it because I uh, I learned this stuff. So you stop. You started at the very top here. So you're talking about say the the agricultural. Okay, so the farmer grows all this. Okay, and then they pass it on to now goes off to the the uh processing center they process it goes off to now to the warehouse it did get sent out there so how does it get sent out there now there's different modes there's by ship containers and now get shipped on to trains yep they, yep. they lower it onto trains mm -hmm. so those are called intermodal people are going, what is that okay now they're intermodal there's different intermodal transportation so we got double double cart ones and actually going fast forward they actually use those in actually building modular housing. Those are shipping containers. So you can do a double stack intermodal. Yep. And people go, huh? Yeah, and I was confused when I learned this too. And then there's super bees. Yeah. We have, so we have super to, bee truck. We have yeah. to bring on Ellen for that. Yeah. So oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's good at that stuff. And, and these are really heavy containers when they're on trains, when they're going along. So you can imagine if they ever hit, hit a truck, that'd be it. <laughs> but anyway, so they get shipped off. Now they go to another warehouse and a, now a semi picks it up. Now they send it out to their distributor, which now sends it out to the grocery stores. Mm -hmm. So now we got fuel. Who, what fuel is those trains? Diesel. See, so it all gets- It all goes in, but here's 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 something off. about inflation and, and regards to all, all of yep. that logistic crap. Right yep. now- Exactly. Uh, here's something I'll say. I don't always agree with everything the illustrious leader of my favorite political party federally says, Mr. Mm. Singh. But he right. is dead. Here's here's something I'll I'll I, I think he gets it wrong. So I'll, but this he's, he's got right. Th 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 this is what he's got right. This is what he's got right. 
right now, grocery stores like Loblaws and Walmart, these these giant corporations, multi-billion dollar corporate corporate grocery chains yep. are making record profits. Mm -hmm. Profits are not revenue. Right. Yep. Revenue is all the money you take in. Profits yep. are what you have after you finish paying up all your been. overhead yeah. and the cost of business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's what profits are. I, what, Galen Weston and and what's his name would have liked us to believe that profits and revenues are the same thing, but they're not. Oh, they're not. I learned that in ledger sheets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Profits are not <laughs> revenue. They're making, re they're not making record. They're making record. Rev they're making record profits after the money after they've after they've paid for the cost of running for their, their business they're making record profits okay mm -hmm. cassandra i got but, but, yeah farmers the chick you know the, the guys that are raising our food that are growing our crops that are raising our beef and our chickens and our eggs and 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 our milk and and you know, and it doesn't matter if you Don't drink oat milk, the... oat milk or cow milk. Yeah. All those guys, they are are also getting gouged by big corporations that are supplying them with their feed yeah. so and the all whole... the things that they need to, right? The insurance mm -hmm. companies are gouged. Okay. And and then and they're not getting paid more. They're not getting paid more for their cattle, mm -hmm. right? They're not getting paid more for their crops. And sometimes they're struggling to uh -huh. get enough from their crops and their cattle to even right. make ends meet. Okay. Uh -huh. And it's getting worse for the farmers. Oh, huge. It's and really, they, it, it's uh, getting worse. But the grocery stores that are distributing these big corporate grocery stores that are distributing the food, they're making record profits. The farmers aren't getting it. They're getting less. The getting workers... Less the workers are getting less, yep. right? The workers are getting less and the consumer, the people that are purchasing them and that getting they would off. not be rich without us, we're being gouged and charged these, and the only people getting ahead are the, are the wealthiest people in this land and the people that are in these big corporations, okay? And here's mm -hmm. my problem. There was a few summers, this is before a few years, about seven, I don't know. I went into the grocery store and I wanted oranges. I refused to buy an orange that year. And the reason I refused to buy an orange because it didn't matter which grocery store I went into. They were all from freaking South Africa. Right. You know, I'm all for trade. I, I want to, there's things that I can get in another part of the world that we cannot produce here mm -hmm. because of a number of factors. Right. That's what we used to call trade. That's what we used to yeah. trade, right? If but if you but you didn't import food that no, could I, be, like you didn't like uh, 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 this is a food that you can't preserve an orange off a tree. You're yeah. you're 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 picking it well before it's ripe in order to do to do that. They're picking it before it's ripe. Yeah. Then they're so they can put it on a ship and it ripens while it's on the sh it's ripening off the tree while it's on the ship. It's losing nutrition on that. Yep. It's losing nutrition. You're 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 increasing your carbon footprint because of the fuel to run yep. the ship. Yep. The fuel for the train, the fuel for the trucks, the fuel for you know all the workers, the run all this stuff is is yep. all stuff to, to take that orange from South Africa. And when we've got oranges. In California is the yeah. closest. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you want to go a little farther, go to Florida. We've got oranges right there. The orange crops weren't bad that year. It wasn't one of those years where California all of a sudden didn't have, you know, like, mm. you, you know what I mean? It, yeah. And and here's the thing, but the but our local farmers, like, I don't care what province you live in, You've got agriculture there and you can probably, even in major cities, the Calgary is, is one of what the fourth largest city, you know, in Canada, I can get to a farm within 15 minutes. I live 10 minutes, get this, not even 10 minutes. I live, I'm less than a five minute drive from downtown Calgary. Hmm. And in 15 minutes, I can be at a farm, wow. 20, hmm. 30 minutes tops. Hmm. I can be at a farm. 
I can go and buy, right? So why am I, why am I paying, why am I paying low blocks? Yeah. Why am I paying low blocks for, Mm -hmm. for like when the farmer's losing out, I'm losing out because Loblaws is making record profits, but I can just go to the farmer and cut out the middleman. Yep. That's the other thing is parts. you can grow a head of lettuce. You can grow tomatoes. Oh, you yeah. could even grow cucumbers. You yep. could even grow an eggplant in a little 10 gallon water jug aquaponic system that you can make yourself. You can grow all your with a light, a $10 a ten dollar grow light uh, with with uh, and a and a a dollar fifty little timer that you can get off Amazon. You can grow all of that stuff in your freaking kitchen mm-hmm. all year round. So why are we why so are what? we struggling to eat? Yes. And so well, what? But well, we get high humidity here, so it should. We're facing should... we're facing oh. unprecedented climate change. Our yeah. our farmers are suffering. We're having. Th- housing insecurity like there's not enough we're not building enough homes um big big again back to the big big corporate multinational yeah. company real estate companies investment firms Rates. are buying up and they're competing so the average person wants to go out and buy maybe their own little condo or their own little rental property to make a little bit of rental income these big corporate investment firms and real estate companies, these big publicly traded multinational multi-billion dollar companies are competing with the average person to buy up that property. And yep. they're, they're causing the price of, of real estate to skyrocket to the point that the average person can no longer afford to buy even their own family home, yeah. let or alone even. a little something to make a little bit of extra money on rental income for those that can't rent. Yeah, or, rent and or it's even. the big core. So, so yeah. this is all happening. And, and, you know, all of those things combined have made me want to do, you know, aside from all my passion about, about livable income, I, I have a solution. Like when I'm looking at all these problems and I started thinking about this before COVID a lot of things have happened, but I've also started connecting with some people. I had this idea. What if we had like a co-housing? So a co-housing is like a co-op, but it's not like a co-op elects a specific board and the board makes a decision and everybody pays and they don't always like in, in a co-housing situation, everybody has a vote. So it's like a proportional. It's like as if Canada had proportional representation representation. <laughs> right well, instead of <laughs> instead of electing a certain board to make all the decisions which is kind of how First past every single person has First, has a vote pass. in ha, every single person has a vote and that vote is counted exactly as one it's not counted with a group of uh, anyway and and so and they make a decision about how they're going to do everybody has their own independent living quarters with their own kitchen but they also have communal areas and they work together i wanted to take that co-housing idea and i i looked at this um i looked at this project and i mean there's other similar projects that i've seen around um the united states specifically but but the the first one i the one that the model i like the best is the one in detroit um there was this um they took an, an area like maybe like east at van in vancouver or like um you know, forest lawn out here in Calgary, where where one of the most poverty stricken areas, and they had like these empty lots. Mm. And a, I think it was a I I could be quoting, but I think it was a group of women that actually decided. Oh. To, anyway, they managed to acqui- somehow managed to get this lot, mm-hmm. and they turned it into an urban farm in the middle of the city. Not on the outskirts of the city, in the middle of the city, in in an impoverished neighborhood, and they and they built this this urban farm, and they started growing food. Mm-hmm. They were able to feed their entire community, and they had enough. They started having so much excess left over that they then took that ex. ex they were they started selling it to like businesses, like local restaurants and stuff. Right. Oh, nice. And, and, and 
right? And then they also, it became a tourist attract. It's become a tourist attraction, this, this wow. little agri-hood. And, small- and they've even started their own little and industries it- off the food that they're growing and producing themselves. Oh, or you wow. can go into like a rest a restaurant on the site and as a and and you can have a meal made from what they grow mm-hmm. and 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 what they and so i you know community, I'm big garden, on, community. so but it's not it's a fa- it's not a community garden it's farm. Okay. a farm no i know I've urban, been like, oh, I guess, yeah, yeah like, like it's an urban a- you like know, instead of doing these little community, because somebody said to me, "Oh, we got community garden." This isn't a community garden. Okay. This is this like is a farm, like a farm. This like- is a uh, like you're farming. You know, yeah. like they they but- took a, a a square. It was like a square city block or just oh. half of a square city block. Um and 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 yeah, and they built um and and they and they just started. They put up greenhouses. They got. You know, so they, they, you know, not everything's in a greenhouse, but they got greenhouses, they got all of this and they're, they're, and, and all the people. So this is where the co-housing comes in is the co-housing community in, I like the tiny home. I want to see, you know, I want to see, I've been talking to a tiny home builder about, uh, about looking into universal design in building tiny homes. Cause I've seen yeah. some. I have seen a couple built with universal design and saying, why don't we start building like tiny, you can build a tiny home community. Um, we can use, there's this fund that the federal government, I'm trying to remember the name of it. I, it's slipping my mind right now. Um, okay. That if with a project like that, we could actually apply for that, that funding. And you could do a rent to own situation for people like you and I. Mm-hmm. Right, because now you're looking at a tiny home, but you're not just you're 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 not just purchasing. So maybe for a nominal rental fee, goes to the equity in your little tiny home within your co-housing community built around your urban agrihood right. or urban farm, and and but you're not just contributing to the community by paying off your little nominal rent fee for your little time. You're also contributing because everybody is going to have a job based on their ability. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. So people that have more ability will do a little bit more and do certain things. And people with, with limited mobility will do with what's it, what's in their beans, but everybody helps each other and contributes. Yeah, everyone has their own, their own and works pack. and we can do this and we can build permaculture and food gardens we can make mm-hmm. our parks into food gardens in these types of communities and we can transform wow. the way we live in cities. And not only will that, by having that type of greenery also and all of that and adding permaculture and all these things to the mix and these co-housing, not only are you you're, are you tackling food and housing insecurity for, for the people that are, that are struggling the most um, and mixed income, it should be mixed income because some people got to offset the cost for others, but you're also, you're also tackling crime. greener cities. The more, the more shrubbery, the more um, permanent um, kind of agriculture, whether, you know, whether it's, whether it's just the, the green, that stuff you're growing in your, in your local park or, or yeah. your little piece of backyard or whatever. All of that, the more greenery you have in a city, the cooler the temperatures. It cools the temperatures down. Oh, yeah. It, it oh, yeah. mitigates all the car. It offsets your carbon expenditures. Mm-hmm. We no, need no. to stop. Yeah. So all of this, actually, what it does is it not only attack attacks our most immediate issues like like income, food, and housing insecurity, but it also tackles the it also tackles climate change and and offers viable solutions because the way we live in our cities right now is a big contributor. If we can make those cities greener, mm-hmm. like greener. And when I say greener, I'm not talking about the energy you use necessarily. I'm talking right. about more trees, more greener, yeah. actual greenery in your city. Mm-hmm. That is going to reduce the temperature. Like we wouldn't be getting these scorching hot summers. Like you're sitting in, you know, oh. like if we, 
make sure that we are contributing to the land and preserving that land on an ecological level. We can do that in cities. And I've been doing a lot of research into it and I'm starting to make some connections. And so stay tuned. Um, I am in the process of trying to move myself and, you know, and I am living with disability and I'm struggling with packing on my own. I'm struggling with even finding a place I can afford. Yeah. But I have to be out by September 30th. So I will, I, and I'm starting to get some momentum and I've been talking to people in my area. Um, I talked to uh, a guy by the name of Chad Smith. He He's um, the brainchild by Be the Change Calgary, which does a lot of uh, outreach on our streets with our homeless. I've talked to um, Ann Landry, who's a huge housing advocate. I've talked to a lot of other people that I've met. Like I went to an NDP barbecue and I met some ladies that are living in an actual co-housing um, place, but it's, it's yeah. a buy your own place. Mo- it's a different kind of model than what I'm, but it's still the same idea. And, and so yeah. I've been telling people and just feeding the seed and I'm starting to get more and more people interested. And, in, and once I settle in, I'm going to be starting a, a go funding fund me. And I'm looking in, I'm, I'm also looking at, I, I'm exploring land trusts. If you know anybody that, is an expert in land trusts i'd love mm. to hear from them i'd love them to contact me um because mm. I, I i'm actually exploring because land trusts are a way to preserve that land so you can take that land and and preserve it for agricultural and ecological reasons through a land trust and that means that you can still have ownership but nobody can actually take it to some other kind of use right it's put in that trust so, um, so I've been looking at, I, I've been exploring some of these kinds of things to get it started, but I would like to, I'd like to, I want to do it because I just want to show people that we don't have to, we do not have to feed these big corporations like Walmart and Loblaws and these big corporate investment funds that are, are making housing unreasonable. We can take a stand by doing projects and working on projects like this to we can take a stand and say and take the business away from these people and make them mm-hmm. unviable so they can stop if our governments if our governments don't want to do it which they should there's things that the governments can do then oh, there, there's yeah they should well they they used to invest in co-op housing more but they well this isn't have- co-op housing though well, I mean, yeah, I realize that, but yeah, I mean, but, it's yeah. kind of this, yeah. it's kind of a similar kind of model. Yeah, well, I, I, yeah, there's, there's things I don't like, like there's things I don't like about co-op housing mm-hmm, that, mm-hmm. that, that do not, that are less likely to happen in, in co-housing mm-hmm, because okay. of the demo, more democratic okay. way it's run. And, but, but yeah, we are, uh, we have been on for almost two hours. So, oh, wow. Yes. Oh, oh. <laughs> if uh, we should, that was deep. We yeah, were like, we, we it's, should, it's always enjoyable though, that, um, because we get into like a lot of great discussions and uh, um, and just really focusing on on the issues. Uh, I mean, one one thing like I wanted to kind of mention too is like mention about like the federal counterparts, and, and as we've all seen, I've seen it so many times in my news feed. I see. Everyone's talking like Big Jay Meek saying, right? You don't talk about disability related stuff. And and he hasn't. I mean, we it's got not the, just him, it's happening got, oh, provincial yeah. in, in provincial every too. single provincial Nobody NDP. wants to talk about disability stuff. Like nobody wants to no. And and we need to put, you know, I saw a great uh one of my favorite one of my favorite Alberta podcasters, uh, okay, Nate Citizens. Pike. Be Nate, Nate Pike with the Alberta Breakdown just did a show with with the with the, the 905 er podcast out of yeah. Ontario. They did a joint show and and you know one of the things that they were talking about was the fact that you know the way the me- our current mainstream media is running it they're not covering a lot of the local issues or the niche issues like what we're talking about, whether it's disability or income and or any kind, they're not talking about what's going on. And, and, they and, they and, it's, and it's exactly like it's podcasts like yours and my, and, and all uh, we're the secondary media. We're the ones that are becoming yeah. the voices for the actual people. And, yeah. and, and I think, yeah. And hopefully more governments. I, I know, I know a lot of politicians listen to your podcast and also listen to theirs and and 
and I and they should listen because we're it's the ones so that are talking about the bread and butter issues at your kitchen table. Why well, it's all about the lived experience. It's all about getting like like real like real people talk about like how it's affecting health, the, the policy decisions, how it affects people's lives. One simple decision has a ripple effect on a person's life. So if it's a negative decision, how do we turn it to a positive? And, I, and one thing I always learned when I was a kid, I was a taught by one teacher, Brent, you can turn a negative into a positive. No, I can't. Yeah. Yes, you can. You can do it. And then yes, you can how to do that, right? Because if you're having a bad day, I could get going, Arr! you know, my neighbor made me, you know, irritated me. Well, how do I turn that, that negative en uh, energy into a positive? Look at as, uh, you know, I'd say, hey, I got somebody else coming on my show who maybe they have something else to say. So I, 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 I turn that focus of negativity into a positive energy because listening to people, it makes yeah. it a bright day of knowing that I have to then say, hey, how do we collectively, and this is a question I ask, I get a lot. How do we as society change policy decisions, how government officials see it as? I see comments of, well, we, we recognize we need to modernize. Okay, well, how do no. we do that? The talk, no, it's like, do this. Just do, do it. We're Just telling do. you what to do. We're yeah. telling you what to do. Like this, oh, there's only so much. It's like yeah, it's like when you're, you're you're in a union negotiation between the yeah. union and they're like, yeah. well, there's only so much money in the wallet. You know, yeah. it's like, no. <laughs> No, no, there'll be there'll be more money if you just listen to us. Well, like <laughs> the part that really irritates me is when when the when the NDP formed government, right? And back in 2017, which is yay, like they you know, right away, hundred dollar increase. Okay, bravo, right? Then they skip mm -hmm. a year. Oh well, we we returned the bus pass. No, you didn't. You know so what? Yeah. When yeah. I when I saw, I was so excited for them. And when they said, Oh, we're giving them a hundred dollar ink. I lost my mind when they were oh, like, here's a, I was like, oh. what in like, yeah, Alberta, the conservative, you know, the conservative yeah. province for the last yeah. 50 years gives yeah. a, a, a person more money and you're like hundreds and hundreds of dollars behind yeah. what a person in Alberta is. Your cost of living is thousands more and, and you're giving them a, yeah. dollars and they haven't had a raise in in how many decades like or a decade and what like how long oh. like yeah i, I just it's, I, it's, I lost it yeah exactly and then all you'd hear is well there's more to do more to do it's like a little playbook and all they do is copy. no it's it, it's oh. just oh, wait, a little, enough thing. to shut you up yeah what here's they think will shut you up and, yeah, and we yeah. got to stop shutting up and buying into it Sorry. Well, 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 there's another thing too. Before we uh, end the segment, this will be a good one. And you all got a good laugh mm -hmm. on this one, which I you probably heard of me say on one of the other podcasts. So one thing that Je Jeff and Sonia and myself we learned, and I literally almost lost it. Uh, it was like, okay, so you're going to give a hundred twenty-five dollar increase. Sonia says, well, why do we got to wait five months? That was the question she had. <laughs> well, and here's the here's the minister's response. Well, I recognize that. And yes, it, it's it's not okay. It's not okay. So she admitted it's not okay because here's the thing, because the computer system was not updated since 2002. It's so old, and but we're coming out the new one in two years. So it's 21 years old and it can't process fast enough any bigger increases. It can't handle the input. My gosh, I used to work with DOS. Freaking... I used to program with DOS way back when, and I know they use DOS, and I could make DOS do so many things. I made my machine reboot. I made it actually send out batch, batch little programs. And back then, before the internet came out, I had it. I was, I just got oh. so intrigued of programming that I made it send out little information packets of, oh, you're interested it's in this It's not call. that. You like, oh get a better God. IT. <laughs> I know. Hire a better IT person. Yeah. Like, come on. I, like, we, that I, is just anybody that knows anything, even a basic amount about like DOS or anything yeah. knows. It's not that no, hard. No, it's not. It's it not just, hard at all. Even if you've got an old system, I get it. The old systems, there's a lot that they can't carry with the new programs, but there's no reason if you've got a, uh, an apt IT yep. person that's really good at what they're doing. They yep. should. There's no reason why it should be that much of a problem. It's not. It's, not, it's like it's like it's like the bus pass. Same thing. 
and there was more to it than that. It was a lot that it had a deadline behind the scenes to it or lose the whole program. But here's the thing I talked to in my adventures uh, on my Breaking with Brent segment and my new segment, Traveling with Brent. I, 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 got, a, I got to talking with a few people around, uh, around the country on uh, my journeys. And here's the thing that I learned, too, is seniors have that bus pass. You don't hear them and they get the same bus pass. It's just a bunch of rhetoric, right? And yeah, I mean, I know. former premier, he says, remember, he used to hear in the legislature, just give them back their bus pass. It's a simple mm -hmm. means of transportation and constant. And then where is it? Sure, you can have a bus pass or have the money. But that was what a former um, colleague, uh, you know, or, or sorry, not colleague, predecessor upon predecessor who had taken it away because it was equity in the system. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I, I you know, just give people still the bus pass. yeah, but you know mm -hmm. what? Just give them the bus pass back. Plus, just let them keep the fifty-two dollars. Oh, God mm -hmm. forbid! No, we can't do that. <laughs> I mean, well, wow. this is it. It's excuses, and I'm not. I, I don't want to minimize. Like it's a shell I, game. It's a shell game. I, I, I have is. been in the background of IT, and sometimes it does take time. I shouldn't be so dismissive, but yeah. I'm. But but at the same time. It, it is an excuse because there's no yeah. reason there are other things that they do in record time when they want to do them. And it's yeah. not just the federal government, even provincial governments, even in BC, yeah. there are things that they do and put out in record time when they absolutely have to look at that. Look at yeah. the increase, the, 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 the yeah. COVID supplement you got no, yeah. record time, no problem. So, so don't tell me that, that like, that is the, the, like, you know, we're not, and and they don't just say it to us because we're disabled. They tell the average person that, and most yeah. average people do not. They're in, they have the acumen in their specific area of work or their specific area, and they're not really paying. It's like oh, the government said oh, it must be true, and they're not really paying attention and digging down. Yeah. And and then they get off the hook. But it's 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 all bull. It's the urgency. Yeah, it's just the urgency. It's it's how much urgent they when 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 the public. When the public gets up puts their feet to the fire and enough people get up in arms, how fast yeah. do they move? Oh, of course. You know, uh, and otherwise the other ones are like, oh, they're just making a bunch of noise. Oh, they haven't heard anything yet. Well, mm -hmm. that's Dude. why, you know, I'm making this call here. Like people yeah. like listen to everything I said, read the links that I pro provided yeah. for Neil, but they'll be in the thing and read up on the, just the studies that I, that I outlined and, and read for yourself that 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 there are other people saying this and what a livable income is and and demand that if you're a person with demand that livable income plus that 40 percent demand yeah. it because you don't deserve to live on crumbs you don't no. deserve to anything less than that you're not living with dignity they say they want us to live with dignity anything less it. than a livable and income for it person with a disability you are not living in dignity you are not living a dignified life your human rights are not being met your basic needs and you need to demand it and stop accepting crumbs and jumping up and down every time you know like, oh, yay, they give you yay. a little crumb oh they're giving yeah. us a hundred dollars no, oh, no no demand a live a, don't not the poverty line not 25 twenty five thousand dollars yeah. a year demand a livable income no less I mean, the average, as I said, it it's more in Calgary, it's more in it's more in BC, but the average forty five thousand dollars a year. Like, why should we be plus the forty percent? Why should we oh. be getting any less as a person with disability, especially when so many of us pay into the system, whether it's through jobs we worked before we couldn't work or part time jobs that we still do, or, or the volunteer work that we do for the charities they keep throwing money at. That could be going to yeah, us. Like, yeah. That's what we we should not be asking for any less. Mm -hmm. I would love to have you back on very soon, and we'll uh, we'll have a, a part two of this segment, uh, and the next one we'll we'll talk about reefs. Oh, I'd love to dig into that. Yeah. 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 No. I don't have. I'm not as good at that. The oh, reefs. Me, me neither. Me I'm neither, not as but... good as the reefs stuff, and I'll and I'll be honest. But yeah. but I'll dig into it. I got some information. I have. Yeah, some I, I'd like to. I'm not an expert stuff. when it comes to reefs either. But um, I like to kind of look at the difference between market housing with reefs versus um, subsidized government housing 
like under RGI, I think in, in Ontario. Well, there's, like there's, also non, there's also non-profit no yes, ha uh, sub, uh, housing too that does low. Yeah. So, so like you got BC, like I got Calgary housing, you got BC housing, whatever. Yeah. And that's yes. the government, the government one, but there's also nonprofits that will, um, and they get government grants too. So that's yeah. another avenue. So there's, there's. So I'd love to kind of look at the difference on that and uh, the difference on um, Neil. Will, Neil will do. Uh, Neil, you can schedule Cassandra, and we'll do a part two on that mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. um, do a, a headline of uh, of um, rent gear to income. Maybe somehow word that in there with it, and then we'll mm -hmm. we'll really target on that topic because. I think a lot of people are going to be interested in that one. I know that um, some of them back in Ontario, you mentioned about uh, that too. So mm -hmm. yeah, so well, yeah. yeah, because yeah. my landlord, I mean, just before we end the segment here, my landlord, I mean, she's a read. She's, she's an agent. She works for a read. She gets it. She agrees with me 100%. Why it's are you not just REITs though. The other publicly traded, there's other publicly traded yeah. companies, uh, corporations like, like investment yeah. funds and stuff like that that are also the the that along with REITs that are are responsible for driving up the price of real estate to the yeah. point that the average person whether whether you're the average renter or the average home want our potential homeowner you're being priced out of the market because of them yeah absolutely um and that'll be a part to that all kind of continue on that part where i'll talk about the management you'll be interested to hear about the story on that one where I wasn't sure where, where the manager stood on it. And I just kind of threw it out there and said, we're going to be getting a $125 increase. She goes, well, it's good for you, but not good for the ones in the other part of the housing sector. Mm -hmm. And I went, oh, she goes, why didn't, why didn't the government just get rid of the shelter and just make it just straight line? Everybody benefits. Oh my God, if you're paying subsidized housing, getting subsidized housing, oh no, no, you don't need extra because you get that. Really? Cost of living. So that was her view. And that's what the former predecessor wanted to get to do, but the government wouldn't let him do it. Ooh, yeah, Shane. <laughs> oh, I want to hear about that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We'll, we'll dive into that. <laughs> One day he's going to do a tell-all book, and it will be really. Oh, I know. I can't. I'll wait. be. I'll. I'll be first in line to get an <laughs> autograph copy. Hey Neil, yeah. we we were picking at him on that part. He says, "I can't yeah. talk about it. I can't." Yeah. No, yeah. I, 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 I'd, I'd love to hear a tell-all from him. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're getting little bits out of them here and there, but you know, <laughs> it's like, ah, oh, it's like, come on, <laughs> like having a bad hair day. You should see my hair I, earlier. It was really I weird. actually, you know, I looked at what e, what what the NDP. I, I don't want to be totally critical of the no. NDP. I mean, what they've, how they, some of their plans in attacking the whole housing situation are actually some of the most aggressive. That I've seen in any province and 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 yeah. other people, even Alberta NDP was wanting to model some of their stuff off of what some of wow. the things and um like and like the healthcare, how they mm -hmm. how what they're what they're doing to try to attack tackle the healthcare situation and 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 fast tracking um you know foreign doctors and nurses and stuff like that. Um and people that are already living here that have these medical degrees that that have not been able to work they're trying to make it they're they're doing a lot yeah. of really assertive and aggressive things and i and i hear i i i've even heard because uh rachel notley was talking about um these these integrated health teams it was such a good idea that even daniel even even my even the dreaded daniel smith is is yeah. trying to talk about them now um and, and you're talking about them out there. So, so there's some good ideas going around and, and, and BC is definitely probably, le I mean, there, the, it's not enough. There's all these other areas they need to be more aggressive at, but there are some things that they're doing that are very uh, trailblazing and, and leading. So I don't want to be critical of everything. I'm right. But you know, know, I, mean, it's, but it's, I do have frustrations. Me, me too, especially when you got some of the uh, members within the party who then agree that, Oh my gosh, like, they got to do better. Like they must do better on the rates. So, I mean, when you're hearing it from the insiders, yeah. Well, you know, and, and, and like yeah. I read you those reports when we're talking about livable income versus, yeah. uh, versus poverty line. I mean, look at all and the market basket measure. I mean, yeah. that was just, I only cited what three, 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 there was more. 
there's tons of people that have written about the inadequacy and all the flaws with this this well, this market basket and poverty. But then, we, the, but then we'd be up to hour three. Well, yeah, plus, no, I can't. Plus, I'm just telling you <laughs> that I cited those many, but there's yeah. so much. So there's well, people. Th there's especially no excuse. When, I had the meeting, uh, when we had the meeting right there, <laughs> Jeff had Jeff and Sonia. We had the meeting right there. Um, Miss Malcolmson said. We're going to be going with the market basket measure because uh, Miss Miss uh, Quantrill, uh, Carla Quantrill, that's the model that they're going with. He looked like he was giving me the Temple of Doom. He was going to blow up. I thought, who was that? Quite, yeah, Jeff. Yeah. And I yeah. thought, yeah. oh my God, it was like he was like a ripe tomato. And I thought, uh oh, he's like a time bomb. And I thought it was like a, uh oh. Phew. You know, it's like, uh oh. And I was just, <laughs> and, 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 and I, I feel had you, Jeff. Show. I feel you. <laughs> I, I had him on the show there and I threw it at him that way. And I said, Jeff, you look like you were ready to explode. And I looked at Sonia and I looked at at uh, um, uh, Sheila Malcolm's staffers because they were right there. And I kind of looked over and they were sitting beside me. And I thought, uh oh, he's going to blow up anytime now. And they, the look on their face was like, uh oh. I thought, I hope you guys aren't the ones who wrote that script to tell Malcolmson that. And I thought, oh boy, like this is going to backfire. And then, so I said, oh, well, I guess the meeting's now going to conclude. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and I said, yeah, yeah I said, yeah. And I, exit they, stage left. Yeah. So they, so they said, Elvis yeah, has questions. left the building. <laughs> so, they, so they asked me, did you have any other yeah. questions? And I said, yes, Sheila, I have a question. Would you like to come on my show? She goes, I would love to come on. And I yeah. come on with her. Oh, hey, Neil. Well, you, but you know what, though? I'd be nice. Uh, I'd be, I'd no, be nice. No, but, but the thing is, is because she's only going to be on for 50, oh, 15 wait. minutes, all right? Oh, Remember? okay. Gotcha. Yeah, so we're we're not going to be doing a live segment with her because it's so going to be so tight. So it's going to be a pre-record, yeah. It's going to be yeah. a pre, pre-record pre thing. Yeah. All uh, right. Well, if, gonna... we had, if we had more time, then we could, but. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I yeah, wouldn't but... want to take her for two hours, but I have I have some very <laughs> pointed questions that I would write down and definitely want to ask her. But maybe I'll just write them down and give them to you. Because yeah, after that, uh, it'd be like instead of what coffee's in this cup, there might be other things in the cup. Well, I would <laughs> like you know, like I have, I'll, I'll write down the questions and I'll I'll send them to you because you know I I would <laughs> like to know like this whole market, you know, the issues around yeah. our. Well, I know, you know I know poverty I know. line versus livable yeah. income. Like, I'd like to hear what she has to say. Yeah. And, and oh, yeah. I, and like Brent, Brent and I have already talked about it. I, I know he's going to talk about RGI because I know that's a that's a huge thing. But yeah. I want to talk about my pink unicorns because I think that's a big thing too. It's like, uh, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Um, you can't. Well, it's all pink unicorns, isn't it? It's it all is. pink. It's all pink unicorns, really. That's all we've been talking about is pink. Uh, yeah. Is the pink unicorns they've been yeah. serving us? But yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it, you know, it's always flashy announcements. Well, we recognize there's mod it needs to be modernized, and um, you know, it, it was it was quoted when they had uh, one of our colleagues on the opposition party sitting in the committee, even and she admitted that there it's archaic. The system is archaic. It needs to be, I mean, it needs to be completely redone. Um, you know, and I I got criticized one time before we end the segment. I said. I remember one guest, I said, well, it was a systemic, right? It, it's, it's, it's basically designed that way. They're like, no, perp and then, of course, I'm saying, no, it's purposely designed that way. It, it, it was. It, you got to think back to when it was designed, yeah. who the people were, what the train of thought was at the time. Yeah. And, exactly. and, and it's been, it, it's been this, this, this lie they've been copy, telling they us. Copy. Yeah. And they just copy paste as yeah. they go along and yeah. But uh, uh, anyway, Cassandra, thank you so much for coming on. Um, I'll get you uh, scheduled maybe later this week as part sure. two. Yeah, uh, it's up to yeah. you. What you got? Tell me what you got. And yeah, um, what uh, what uh, actually? I guess uh, what what day works good, uh, Neil? What good for you? Well, and what... um, I have to get back to you on that. Okay, uh, so we'll just we'll just leave it open open. Yeah, we'll leave it like that, and uh, we'll get yeah. uh, Neil will arrange with you, and we'll, mm -hmm. we'll get you back on part two. Sounds great. Yeah, it was well, fun, guys. Yeah. Always Thank love you. it. Always fun. yeah, no, fabulous. Thank it you. It was so intense much. this time. <laughs> well, it was, but it was great. It was great. It's always great. A three-hour <laughs> tour. Three-hour <laughs> tour. <laughs> Thanks everyone for tuning in today. Uh, it's a longer episode today, but it's always great having Cassandra joining on and we talk about these important issues that affect Canadians with disabilities across this national 
country, uh, you know, should I say Canada? Well, I mean, can we make Canada a much better country? Sure we can. With your lived experience, your voices, come on the show. Let's talk. Um, and if you don't want to come on the show, uh, join in solidarity with other PWD across the country, uh, upcoming rallies within each province. I think that you need to get our voices heard within our communities. Let's cleverly come together. Uh, go to your local mayor, your local MLA, um, whatever you may do, your MPs, make your voice heard. I mean, every voice counts, right? Do what we can do as a country, come together, and we can make change happen. And if, because if we don't, nothing will change. Status quo will continue. So subscribe to Neil Matheson's YouTube channel. Stay up to date on all the upcoming episodes of my guests coming on. Do you want to be a guest? Contact Neil or myself. Um, we'll get you scheduled in. Stay tuned on Breaking with Brent and my new segment, Traveling with Brent. Uh, it's great. Yeah. And, and, I, uh, and I wanted to do a quick 15 second plug on the, my sure. uh, website too, the yeah. daddy, daddybentlegs.com. That's daddybentlegs.com. Uh, the reason why I'm plugging it is because I put a lot of work into it. I've actually done a lot of SEO, uh, you know, the search engine op optimization, and uh, it's really working good now. And I've got all of your, um, I've got all of your podcasts. Um, I've got a devoted webpage there. I've got the audio only podcast being served up there now through Spotify and all other channels like Google mm -hmm. and uh, Amazon oh. and everything. So. So it's worth uh, stopping by there at daddybentlegs.com and seeing everything. It's uh, I think it's great. I like I've had the I've had the web, web, website for like ten years now, and yep. uh, this is the first time I've actually put some effort into it to like optimize it <laughs> properly. So so it's kind of awesome. cool. Yeah. Well, you know, it's uh, and I and I thank you, Neil, for doing that. And uh, you know, and it's all about the, the guests who come on. And I and I thank all my guests who've come on. And I. You want to come back on a future guest, come on to the show. I want, we want to hear from you. I want to hear from you. I want you to talk about uh, your, how government imposed uh, legislative poverty affects your life. Um, have, what has caused um, you to be uh, where you are right now in your life? Um, whatever your story is. I mean, everyone has their own story. Um, I'd love to hear from uh, you and please reach out to Neil. Uh, if you feel more comfortable reaching out to Neil or myself, if you reach out to me, I'll forward it on to Neil, just so you know, uh, because Neil is the editor producer of the of the show. Does a wonderful job. I think, and it's all up to thanks to Neil for all your work that you do behind the scenes. Yeah, and, thanks, Neil. And, and also, you know, I, I need to you know quickly say thank you to uh, to my uh, my secretary, um, which doesn't really she doesn't get a lot of um, you know thank you. Uh, she's for all she's, work that she's you do. She's behind the scenes, behind the scenes, she, behind, she's the scenes. behind the scenes, <laughs> behind the scenes. And, and as, as this, uh, as the podcast grows, um, there's going to be other opportunity for more people to be added on. So stay tuned on that. Um, and I want to thank Cassandra for, uh, for you coming on, on a thank regular you. day too, um, because it's so important hearing, um, well, us all coming together collaboratively to, to, uh, make Canada a better place for the, well, I think there's a lot that we, you know, a lot of people like to focus on the fact, I mean, uh, as we all know that there are, there are, not everybody agrees within the disability, but there's more True. that we, there's we more that we, if we don't, <laughs> oh, but there, if, if we get down to brass tacks, we actually agree yeah. on, on more than we disagree on. And we need to start focusing on those things that we yeah. do agree on. Because there's always like, little components from every person has their own area to, to, um, it's like a puzzle putting it all together exactly and this yeah and yeah. and i learned from people too like you know like uh i know i've, I've said to uh you know and i'm not going to say you know who or what yeah. but you know i've i've said the wrong thing and i'll admit it. yeah I, you know hey i made a maybe told somebody hey you know they you know you don't need this because and i'm you know whatever but uh hey you live and learn right we you all only know what you know until you yeah you don't know what you don't know until you know it and yeah. and, so you know and, it, yeah. and and and, and you learn from other people we're also human. Yeah, we make mistakes. Sometimes we make mistakes. You know, the, you know the the difference between you know some people will make a mistake and 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 they'll double down on it. Yeah, exactly. But, but but the most important thing is is if somebody makes a mistake and they're willing to say, "Hey, I made a mistake." Yeah. Hey, I screwed up, and then you learn. <laughs> that's, that's like it. that. That's like that yeah. Mar Margaritaville song. 
Yeah. Wasting <laughs> away in a margarita, though. It could <laughs> be my fault. <laughs> yeah. and, then, and then you hear the train. Oh, Looking for oh. that last jigger of salt. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Some that's people me. say that there's a woman, woman to blame. To blame. But, but I, I know. It could oh, no, be my, my own fault. damn fault. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Yeah. And on that note, we're, we're out. <laughs> right. No more singing from me. <laughs> okay, bye, everyone. Thanks, everyone.